Roll Over DJ by Jet on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl? Yeah. Bit miserable today, Carl. Let me explain why. Go on. Steve, and to you, the listeners. Well, we came in to a big, big bunch of stuff. Dropped off by, was it Becky from yeah. Marks and Spencer? Just like lovely stuff. Food, presents for the cat, books, just, you know, to Ricky and Steve. Ricky and Steve. Ricky and Steve who do the show, right? Ricky, Gervais and Steve Merchant. GQ presenters of the year. Creators of the yeah. office, yeah. right? Yeah. Award winning. Carl's looking over, I go, oh, uh, so, well maybe, well, oh, it's not just, not for you, no. And then, then he told me why he's grumpy anyway. Go on. Do you know what XFM are giving everyone, he's been, how long have you been here? About six years. What are you getting for Christmas from XFM? Two CDs. <laughs> <laughs> Is that of your choice, or do they choose them? Uh, there's a list of about 30. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell them what you chose. 30 CDs. I've gone for, uh, Kings of Leon album. Yeah. And, uh, The Best of Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we, like, given them away in the past or something? Or you could have burnt them off, couldn't you? You could have done copies. Illegal, but you could have done that. Mm. Anytime you wanted. I, I don't think Bob Marley minds if you- No. The bootleg is CDs. It's out of order, though, isn't it? It is bad. <laughs> Although you Is that always the case? Has it always been the truth of all the time you've been here? No, it has been better than this. Yeah, although you do get paid quite well and you do have an easier time. Yeah, but don't give me the CDs then. If it was a milkman, you don't go, oh, I have two bottles of semi-skimmed. Happy <laughs> Christmas. <Yeah. laughs> that is a valid point. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Are you complaining? Uh, who is it who made this decision? Oh, there's it... no point. No point, is there? Why? There's no point. I don't like moaning anyway, just... <laughs> Has it come from up top? Is it yeah. like from the capital people? Just, just everyone, that's what everyone gets. Yeah. Yeah, but, oh, will Christian get two CDs for getting up at 4.30 every day for about five years? And keeping this station afloat. Mm, <laughs> probably. Yeah. So, that's why I'm a bit fed up. What yeah. are you listening to first, Marley or Leon? Well, you have, uh, have a bit of, yeah, a bit of Marley. I'll tell you what Marley's good for, as well. You're going to have a little beach holiday, aren't you, over Christmas, going to Lanzarote? Mm. Listening to that on the beach, you'll, you'll, you'll realise how wise XFM are in the long run. <laughs> you know, you go, well look, they could have given me 400 quid, right? Well, I'd have spent that. But this is, you know, the legend it's lives the on. It keeps on giving. So, you're probably, you know what I mean? Think how much those, what you gotta think of is how much those, all these great songs took, not only from, it, from the depth of his soul and, you know, uh, uh, it, all his sort of angst and knowledge and love, and then all the studio time, the marketing, and you're, they're just giving you one that. They go, no, don't worry about that, Carl, you have it. And you go, what? All the time we spent with Bob Marley and everything. Uh, you know, have it, Carl, have it, have it, Carl, have it, Carl. And then, yeah, have that, have that. Thanks, thanks, well done. Carry on. We're still gonna pay you for the work. Yeah. That's just some on top. Here's a little piece of Bob, free. Yeah, so don't moan, it's extra. So, I didn't have to give you it at all. Play a record, you're ungrateful little swine. Some people, like the homeless, aren't getting anything this Christmas. This is my Except favourite. Elvis Costello track of all time. It's Allison. This wasn't on the list. Elvis Costello? Allison on XFM 104.9. So, that's it. But maybe, I'll tell you what, a good idea, Carl. Just beg. Just ask for, get asked for other things. What do you want? What do you want for Christmas? You must have a big fan base out there willing to make you things. Maybe like a little, I don't know, gloves, pair of gloves. Just a little woolly hat. Do you want to send a uh, necklace in for Suzanne? That'd be handy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's what she wants. Is, is Suzanne listening today? No, she's out. Right, okay, this is the dilemma. Me and C Steve, yesterday, we're trying to convince Carl that it would be a good idea to buy Suzanne a Christmas present. Mm. Okay. Now, what? Wh why aren't you going to buy a Christmas present? Explain, Carl, why you don't think you should buy a Christmas present. No, I've told her I'll get her one, but in the new year. We're going away on holiday and that, so yeah. there's no point taking stuff away. Yeah. Going to Lanzarote next week. Just get her something in the sales after Christmas, with, yeah? Yeah. Right. And we, me and Steve were trying to explain to Carl that she would love it if you bought her something on Christmas Day. Yeah, but she knows now. D but, Knows yeah. what? I've told her. So no, well, I'm gonna tell you, you know, right, this, dear listener, this was Carl's worry. I said, I bet she's got you something. 
and Carl was worried in case he got her something and she hadn't got him something. Yeah. He'd be livid. He didn't want to be down. He didn't want to be a present down. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his face! So buy a nice necklace. Don't spend- just put, spend hundred quid, you know, just a little token. You're going away. Go on, taking her away on holiday. They're not taking her away on holiday. What, what, you're paying for it, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you really? Well, half and half and that. Right. So you're paying for you to go on holiday? <laughs> That's good of you. So the gift is your company, really? <laughs> She's done all right. She's done all right! Why do you talk like you're 60 years old? <laughs> and you've been working down the mine? <laughs> She's- I don't know she's done all right. Do you go into her and say, Suzanne, you're bloody lucky. I mean- You've fallen on your feet, look who you've it, got, what? I'm not sure she has done all right. <laughs> I don't want to be critical, but- <laughs> Oh dear. So what are you going to get in the sales? What are you going to get her? Oh, it depends. Um, I'm thinking- I mean, I'll give her the choice, she can have Kingsley and old Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll let her decide that. <laughs> oh yeah. dear. Oh. Uh, I can't wait to see you. Where, where are you going, Lanzarote? Yeah. Where's that? I don't know, Suzanne sorted it. I, I, I said, I said, I said, uh, Lanzarote, what, I said, is that, I said, is that Africa or is it? Spain or Portugal? Just thought he was, don't know, I went, we really don't know. Well, what's the currency he went, don't know. I said, Suzanne booked this one, did she? <laughs> yeah. I thought, uh, so, um, where is it? Is it, is Lanzarote African or? Foreign. Somewhere, somewhere uh, foreign. I was looking last night. And, uh, doesn't look that good. <laughs> there was, there, like, one of the highlights of the things it says you've got to do is go and have, uh, apparently they've got restaurants in caves, and that's, like, mm. one of the things they say you must do. Mm. So, if that's a highlight, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, we'll do that. Go and see what that's like. Yeah. When you're on the beach, Carl, do you wear the very, very tight Speedos? No. Do you walk around with uh, sort of longest shorts, yeah. t-shirt on, probably with a sort of a light shirt on top of that. Right, sure. So uh, quite quite wrapped up then. Covered up. Do you wear a hat? Because obviously the bald head there is <laughs> risk of sunburn. Uh, no, I just put a bit of lotion on it. Lotion on there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, just have a bit of a wander, wander down the beach, have a look. Yeah. See if there's any old blokes with their tackle outs and a backpack. <laughs> uh, I'll to look forward to. So. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, uh, we're looking forward to finding out how you get on. Yeah. Like and uh, interested to know what she gives you on Christmas Day. Uh, more yeah, scintillating yeah. chat after this next song. Right, that placebo. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Love it. Special needs. <laughs> <laughs> placebo, special needs on XFM, 104.9. Email him where Lanzarote is. I don't know if it's Italy or Spain or Europe or maybe Africa. You know, these are the sort of things, these are the reasons I come into the theatre, to, to at least learn something, innit, Carl? We've stopped educating Ricky, so I've stopped, I've stopped learning, you know, about things like the woman who had mud all her life. I and, thought you were uh, before when we were in the office. What, what did you, well, go on, what was that? What did you teach me? Uh, they've just counted how many fish are in the scene, though. No, they what? haven't. just done a census. A census? Them. What, a fish? Yeah, some fellas have gone in the sea and it's, they've got to work out, there's about... This is Spratt, is this, do your son know he's a lodger? Okay, let's mark him down, that's two. Oh, I've lost count, six million, four and oh, darn. So how many are there? Well, there's a lot. There's <laughs> 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 oh. Well, there are more species of fish than bird, mammal and reptile put together. That's, that's on my DVD of animals. That's still available in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, uh, find it online, you'll get that slightly cheaper. Uh, 15 What? Go on, ask me a question. 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 I was discussing this yesterday. I'm not, this is not a bit of shit. This is not a joke. I genuinely have always, always been slightly perplexed, and we were discussing it last night. The notion of the birds and the bees. Yeah. Now, I don't mean, you know, the birds and the bees. I no. understand now. You why, know. why they use the birds and the bees? Yeah, because, well, you see, I always, as a child, I never, no, I, was, I assumed the bees were having some kind of relations with the birds. No. So what's, what, is there anything to do with the birds and the bees, or is it literally, uh, you know, just like a euphemism, it's just, uh, oh, well, the birds and the bees? No, but they, they- Do the birds do anything with the bees? No, no, not at all. It was where parents- take them out, they go to parents them. used to, to sidestep the issue by saying things like, you know when a lady blackbird and a, and a man blackbird, they meet, right, they make a little nest, and then because they're in love, they have an egg. Yeah. And that was it. I understand that, that makes sense, but why the bees? Why the birds and the bees? Um, well- Probably, um, 
I don't know. I don't know. You see, I, within nature, forgive my ignorance, within well, nature there well, is no relationship between bees well, no, and birds, is there? No, no, not at all. No, not at Nothing's all. Nothing's going on. But probably what it was, it was, it, the parent found it hard to say, you know, daddy puts his penis at mummy's vagina. It was much easier to say, like in the insect world, billions of them queue up and just fill the queen with spunk for about a day. <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, avoiding yeah. the embarrassing <laughs> intercourse. <laughs> exactly. That's m what I think, Carl. What do you think? Were you were you taught about the birds and the bees? Did anyone bring that up with you? No, Carl? it was just in that class, wasn't it? When uh, put a video on. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> video. Yeah, then we had a film. And they just said, "Lay, I watched that." And then uh, what film? Like, right. Basic Instinct. It was just just like you know, two two people, and uh, all sat around the telly and watched it. One girl fainted. And <laughs> 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 uh, they said, "Right, that's that. Next week." You know, prisms. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and did it teach you everything you needed to know? Uh. Well, how much do you need to know? <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> no, true. Except one kid in my class still thought a baby came out of an ass. Afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't understand. <laughs> I think what they should have shown on those videos is technique as much as anything. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Because it was largely just instructional. Wooing. Mm. Mm. Wooing. What he didn't tell you was how to get into a position where this <laughs> might be of <laughs> some interest. <laughs> that should have been the first four weeks of the course. Yeah, well obviously that baby, who had a, the, the kid who had a baby, what was going on there, Carl? That that was was Did you see that? Yeah, that was going to be your favourite programme, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't that good in the end. What, Why? This is, you told us about this story ages ago, didn't ages you? Ages ago. I told you about, about a year ago, about a baby that had a baby. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's a bit different, the baby that had a baby, isn't it? Whereas a Siamese twin with a, with a, a, a breech, um, actually just, you know, developed in, inside him for, you know, just, well, it wasn't even developing. Uh, it was, uh, a, a, a twin stillborn that, um, just was inside, mm -hmm. enveloped in the other one's body. So it's a little bit different to a baby, what had a baby, isn't it? Yeah. Actually disappointed he was. Mm. Do you know what he said to me? He went, well I thought it was going to come out. And yeah. go, oh bloody hell I'm seven, what a waste of my life. <laughs> like it had been yeah. in there going, oh, hello, <laughs> yeah. hello, I'm seven. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. Yeah, a bit disappointing, but there was a programme on after that, right? Um, at ten o'clock on Discovery, now I haven't got Discovery. Oh, right. It was about... Good? Oh, I didn't see it. This oh, is it. Okay. I was going to say to people, if they've got a copy of it on tape, if they can send it in. What was it? Uh, about a baby with four legs. <laughs> right. That's, that was on, that ten on... It me. wasn't a puppy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing up there? <laughs> yeah. It's my baby. <laughs> oh, is it mum? Alright then, yeah. fine. Yeah. Oh, it's got four legs, yes. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Look, Dad's legs. gone, he's never coming back, you've it... got to get over it. <laughs> so, if anyone's it's got a baby, send it in. Oh right, dear, okay, send it in, so you want to take with a baby with four legs. You're going to be disappointed again. It's not going to be like a baby with four legs who's running round, running up the curtains. You know what I mean? It's not going to be that. They're probably, it's probably going to be two legs and then two sort of like floppy appendages. You know what I mean? It's not, they're not going to be brilliant, it's not going to be like Jake the Peg. You're going to be disappointed. Apparently Lanzarote is one of the Canary Islands. Oh, is it? Although we've also been told it's part of Spain. Right. I don't yeah. know who to believe. I don't know who to believe either. Um. That's put, that puts me back, because I knew it was either one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I knew it Um. What about it? Pilot knows, doesn't he? Huh? Pilot knows where he's going. Oh, I thought so, yeah. Doesn't matter then. No. Right, we're we playing Jayhawks. Let's play it. Yeah. Love it. Got bored with that conversation, did you? Long and winding road. I love that, mm. but I don't like the way McCartney sings here. Uh, well, there's just one, he goes, uh, you leave me waiting here. Well, he's always got that slightly affected. But it sounds style, like Richard it? Burton or something, here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's only one that does it, but mm. I don't know why. Mm. I just think he likes it or wants to go back and change it. Maybe it's like, but having said that, you know, I'm not going to take any away from the Beatles, one of the best bands ever. <laughs> well, yeah, good luck. Brilliant to songwriters. Oh, yeah, uh, well. music, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've had a lot of emails, Carl. I don't want to sort of put a damper on your Christmas, but a lot of people have been slagging off Lanzarote. One Do of them mean? just said, well, one of them just, I, let me, I don't know if I can find it. It is Canaria, isn't it? It's Grand, it is the, the, one of the Canaries, isn't it? 
It's a volcanic island covered in volcanic dust. It's very windy, so you have to dig a hole to sit in on the beach. <laughs> and there's hardly anything to do. <laughs> That's the Mike got him, and he says, uh, unless you like quad biking. Well, you know, you've seen what happened to, uh, no, don't go quad week, biking. So don't do Not with your little head. There's no protection at all, is there? I don't know what you're thinking, I don't know. At least Rick Mann and Ozzy had lots of hair. You, 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 yours would, you'd be like Humpty Dumpty, it would crack like a little egg. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we'd seen, like, yeah, there's no King's or King's horses. So, yeah, yeah, well, they, can, they couldn't do the job anyway. No, they shouldn't them. really send them, they're not really yeah. qualified. Send a, not equipped to send put a, a medical man. man like Neil Fox in. <laughs> yes. To mend but not eggs. Some kind of military horse. I bet he's had egg on his face a few times, hasn't he? What, Foxy? Yeah. Well, um, most of the series of Pop Idol. <laughs> 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 right, Carl. Lanzarote, good or bad? Well, you got to give it a go, haven't you? Yeah, well <laughs> done. <laughs> give yeah. everywhere a go. Exactly. That's what I was saying. You know, don't just take the word for it. I mean, I mean, if it had said an Ananova, mm. uh, Lanzarote shit, he'd have believed it. Sure. You know, if he'd have overheard it in a pub, <laughs> yeah. Lanzarote a crap, he'd have believed it. <laughs> if he'd have seen it on a website mm. that was mainly concerned with monkeys and witches, <laughs> he'd have believed it. <laughs> yeah. As See, it is. Everybody raves about New York, and when I went there, I thought it was rubbish. Well, you're an idiot then, because yeah. that is the, the possibly though, the greatest city in the world, along with London. Subjective, though. That's why they have holiday programs and that, innit? So you see it and you decide for yourself and that. Yeah, but you saw, um, Venice on a holiday program, as you put it. You went there and you went, it was rubbish, full of black bin liners. Well, it is. Right. Didn't they show that? It stunk. Didn't Tudor's Charmer say that? Uh, oh, it stinks here, and there's loads of rubbish everywhere. No, she didn't. Did she mention that? No. That's what I mean. <laughs> so it depends what you want from holiday, doesn't it? Well, yeah. But so... You're an idiot if you don't like New York, so next. Anyway, come on, don't, come on, break up, guys. Kiss and make up. Yeah. Um, Carl, we've had an email, some old rockbusters. Uh, um, someone's emailed in, they wonder if you can get some of your old Rockbusters clues, your old genuine Rockbusters clues. I know Rockbusters has come back Well, of course he can, can, it's the way his brain works. Well, indeed, but uh, I think you'll, uh, well, maybe you can also enjoy the challenge, Rick. Yeah. And, and you at home. I remember them as well, because I remember how angry they made me. Here's <laughs> some old rockbusters. Uh, that army's got some well nice trenches. DW. Uh, that army's got some well nice trenches. DW. No. Dandy Warhols. That one works. It's though. not bad, is it? That's why I didn't get that one, because it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's only got one sticker left. It, you, it was actually he's only got one sticker left. Oh, okay. He's only got one sticker left. Uh, Oh, the band His Last Sticker. <laughs> exactly. With Justin Fishman, yeah, His Last Sticker. Yeah. They were brilliant, weren't they? I, uh, what happened to His Last Sticker? Are they still going? <laughs> he'll, he'll strap some chocolate to your feet. That's A. A band or artist, A. He'll strap some chocolate to your feet. Go on. Aerosmith. I don't know, really, what that means, but... And finally, um, you'll have to- Aero cobbler. <laughs> oh, yeah. The well-known, uh, aero cobbler. <laughs> and you'll have to stick her in the oven. A, B. You'll have to stick her in the See, oven. See, he thinks, he thinks, um, blacksmith means, like, just shoes. Like, it's not the smith, the, it's the smith part. Mm. A smith is just a, a right, isn't it? So it doesn't work, I don't know, aerosmith. What does that mean, Carl? What well, does that come mean? come on, you'll have to stick her in the oven. A, B. Yeah, I know that one. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? But it doesn't work. Apparently it does. You'll have to stick her in the oven. A, B. Single or artist. Well, Anita Baker. Anita Baker. Why, why do you have to stick her in the oven? Anita Baker. <laughs> oh, I need to. Mm. But why didn't you say, like, um, you'll have to, uh, um, get his hair cut and put a nice white, um, chef's hat on? That's Anita Baker. See, that works. That works, Carl. I need to bake her. Doesn't work. It is shite. <laughs> okay, well, right. listen, uh, before you judge, listen to today's Rockbusters. Okay. They're here with us now. Here's Carl Pilkington. Yeah, right back, them. just for Christmas. Mm. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. I've, I've only got two, really, cause Oh, I was, what? Because oh, I, was tr I was trying to work one out before, right, in my little room. Yeah. I was looking at different band names, thinking, what can I do? Yeah. Couldn't concentrate, because Ricky was in there, trying to spray deodorant all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm. <laughs> well, you should have done them yesterday. You should have, you should have shut me out. Right. So there's just two. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I've kind of got an idea for the third oh, one. Fine. Oh, I'll right. have a go. Yeah. Right, so anyway, the first one. Should we uh, play a record and come back to this? We'll, we'll do it quickly, yeah. we'll do it quickly. No, 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 no play a record. Play record. Rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish. Libertines. Mm. Useless. Just give me the gifts, then you have a little price. Right. Yeah. 
vaccines, don't look back into the sun on XFM. Well, the general public are getting involved with, um, Carl's holiday and, I mean, this has been a damning report on Lanzarote. There's not been a positive word written about Lanzarote so far. Wow. It's volcanic, there's no natural water Sorry, supply. Sorry, there's no natural water supply. It's you have all to important. sit in a hole. What do you think of this, Carl? What, what do you think of the people that want the, what, do you to know that you're going to a rubbish place when you can't change it? What do you think of that? Show, will it? What do you It'll mean? Be all right. What do you mean it'll be all right? Because I'm gonna go there thinking, oh, there's no water and that, and there will be water. <laughs> no, they didn't say there's no water. What did they say then? There's no natural water supply. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bothered. It doesn't bother me. All right. I'm gonna have a good time on that. What are you gonna do? What's your plan to do? Got a book. What, you, what book you got? A uh, rich old book. I'm just yeah. gonna read that. Brilliant. Um, and the weather's better than air, isn't it? Yeah. So, someone, uh, someone emailed just now, they said they're listening online and there's a problem with their computer and everything's sped up, the music's sped up, our voices, Rick, are sped up, except Carl's. That's how slow he speaks. <laughs> <laughs> so when everything's yeah. sped up, he sounds a normal. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're doing Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, come on. Listening Steve, online. Do you want to wow. do the, uh, clues? I wonder what the clues are, I've never heard a piece them together, but I'll give you the prizes. Uh, The Old Grey Whistle Test Volume 2, <laughs> Kumars at number 42, Volume 2, or maybe that's Volume 1, who cares? Porridge, Series 3, Volume 2, The Office, Complete Second Series on VHS, for anybody uh, who's still got grandparents. And um, U2, A Best of 1990-2000, and Smash Hits The Reunion, that'll be the kind of stuff you'll love. Spice Girls is on there, Liberty X, Atomic Kitten. Do you see that? Do you see Steve's enthusiastic? Even though the, the, the competition's rubbish, the prize is a second rate, Steve is going, well, I'm not gonna punish London, right? I'm gonna big it up. You're there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Come on. Right, here's clue the one. first Come clue. On. Clue one. Come uh, on. Uh, Come on! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Can't do any photos, cause it's been nicked by what? a German. <laughs> oh, right, start again. Oh, start again. What? Clue one. Rockbusters, clue one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is Rockbusters with Carl Pilkington, go! I can't do any photos cause it's been nicked by a German. And what's the initial? AC. <sighs> right? Next. S second clue. If you keep eating, this bit of your body <sighs> will get bigger. PC. PC. It's an artist or a band, who is it? PC. <laughs> If you keep eating, this part of your body will get bigger, right? Yeah. And the last one I'm not really sure about. Oh. Um, if you... <laughs> <laughs> He's actually winging it now. Imagine if this was mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about it. I know you're supposed to be subject Come on! Uh, okay, go! The, the place where you go to oh, take your dog a walk and that. The, the, the place where you go to take your dog oh, a walk. Get it then. <laughs> no, no, don't do it! No, do it! Get you! <laughs> Tim Burgess. Oh my Corazon, is that? Yeah. <laughs> What's that mean? I've no idea. Phone in if you know. No, yes. don't bother. Oh, oh, email then, at least. Yeah, okay. I'd like to know these things. Sure. Um, we were doing the Rockbusters just before the ads and the record, Rick. I know you were enjoying it. Yeah, come on, get this clue out, Carl. It's three. What is it? Right, the first one was... No, no, we don't look at the first two. What's can't the do any photos oh. it's been nicked by a German. Yeah. Second one, if you keep eating the, uh, if you keep eating, this bit of your body will keep getting bigger. Yeah, it's different every time. Go on, what's the third and, one? And, um, w where you take your dogs oh. for a walk and that, or you might go there on a Sunday. What? Um, sort of... Uh, oh, Jesus Christ! Just, 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 just be quiet for just a moment. Right, okay, do this clue. Right, start from now. This is the third blockbuster Sorry, Rockbuster Clue. That was a Freudian slip. Yeah, go on. Oh, we'll get done. Oh. Right, go on then, go. Where you take your dog a walk, or you or uh. you might go there on a Sunday and that. Um, <laughs> people sort of might taste that area. <laughs> right? Oh. You are, it's rubbish. AP. Right, well the other one's AP as well, eh? AP. What? AP, Reproductive Race at A quick reminder of them again with the initials, quick. Oh, this is such rubbish. first one, can't do any photos because it's been nicked by a German. Second one, if you keep eating- What was the initial? AC. Don't get annoyed, that's what the game's about, the initials! Yeah. If you keep eating, this bit of your body will get bigger, that's PC. Right. Right? 
and where you take your dog maybe on a Sunday and you go for a walk there and that. Have a taste of it. That's <laughs> right. different! AP, AP, just email in and you win some stuff. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. What rubbish. I wonder why we stopped this game. Well, I think it's probably exhausted him. He needs to go to some kind of volcanic dust island <laughs> for a holiday. <laughs> With no water, yeah, exactly. just to dry out and get some new ideas. Oh, I'd love to see you sitting there <laughs> on, the, on these black ash stands, just yeah. sitting there going, I'm thirsty, Suzanne. <laughs> There's no I've finished, I've finished my Rich Old book. I can't focus. I'm going blind. I need some water. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, bless him. Anyway, happy Christmas. We said we weren't getting out, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> right, go on then. Um, oh, dear, it was the premiere. Did you see the coverage? It was a premiere of uh, Lord of the Rings Part oh, 3. Oh, I can't be bothered. I mean, man alive, I'm sick of it. I watched the, the first one and I was actually quite. I've never been into all that sort of stuff. Never liked Gollum it. Gollum and Dungeons and Dragons no. and gatekeepers and weird magic and Harry Potter makes me, I want to punch his face in. <laughs> I know what you mean. But I mean, it's sort of like, oh. Well, Lord no. of the Rings, when I was at school, if you were into that sort of thing, you were a nerdlinger. They would beat you up, they would exactly. shout heckle abuse, all that sort of thing, you know. I, I wasn't a fan. I actually don't know anyone who admitted they were into that I know. Nonsense. It was shameful. It was embarrassing. Now, the whole world's gone crazy for it. Even the tough guys, the hard nuts, the streetwise kids, they're loving it. Can't wait for the third one. I see people raving about it. Jonathan Ross, all these people going, it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's three hours and ten minutes of trolls and goblins and magic spells and large feet and magic rings. I'm loving all that crap. <laughs> What's wrong with I you know. people? I will smite you with my sword. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. just interminable. The orcs and the norks I saw and some, the... I saw some people playing this game. They had a big manual and a dice, and they're in a pub, and they are all had, they're all fat with beards, right? And he threw a dice and he went, looked down and he went, um, and he said something like, um, um, uh, outside them, uh, the three, three miles to Mumra. And they went, oh, well done. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, know. I, was, I want to go and say, what is this game? Yeah. What? It's absolutely extraordinary. Well, they showed some coverage of the Lord of the Rings um, premiere on TV, and there were people dressed up as some of the characters. Yeah. There was a girl chatting saying, "Well, I just think Gollum's hilarious." What? what? People talking about telling me Gollum's hilarious in this new film. How is he funny, my precious? All my precious. What's funny about this? I, I'm losing it. I'm That's genuinely. It. Is he like Yoda? I don't. I, like know, Yoda. I don't know what the joke is. I, I'm missing it all. And when the walking trees started talking. Oh man, I love it. Gollum, like Gollum's the little one that looks a bit like Gandhi. Sort of yeah, exactly. The yeah. computer animated Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's how he's described in the book. <laughs> But so, this is the other thing I say, oh, then they go, oh, well, Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, he's a genius. You know he created his own language? Whoopee! Carl comes up with a new word every week that he's made up. <laughs> he he's not a genius. Yeah, well, that bloke, the bloke, a look of frighteningness came across <laughs> his it. face. Frighteningness. Yeah. Carl's new word. Although, you know, Shakespeare uh, introduced 1,200 words in his language, apparently. Well, he was a genius. He's estimated. And I only know one of them. Yeah, what Brilliant. Brilliant? Yeah. How did he come up with that? I don't know. I reckon he was, uh, maybe he was reading Macbeth and went, I'll tell you this, this is brilliant. Yeah, and his wife said, what? This is brilliant, I'll tell you this, this is absolutely brilliant. I don't know what you mean. Sort of. Will. Oh, it's sort of better than good. Read it, see what you think. Well, it's good, yeah, but I mean. Read it again. Well, it's, well, it's getting better each time. Is it brilliant? It is brilliant. Yeah, see? Yeah. I don't I, know how you, I just, when the audience were there I on that first night. I know it wasn't brilliant. it wasn't brilliant, it was excellent, he came up with. Well, fair enough, it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. But on the first night, when everyone was in the theatre, you know, the dregs, the Carls of the, of the Middle Ages, they're still sat there, the Renaissance, I should say, they're all yeah. sat there watching it, they're enjoying the play, they're loving it, all the kind of people dressing up or whatever it might be, the boys playing the girls, the girls not involved, all the rest of the, they're loving it, I'm loving this, it's absolutely brilliant, uh, he's gonna kill her, da -da -da -da. well, forsooth, it was excellent, I don't know what that means. Yeah. You've lost me. Excellent. I'm shooting off. Yeah, was it, uh, what, it was what, wow, you know, excellent. I don't see how you can make up words, it's like, it doesn't seem that that's, that doesn't count in poetry. Well, I suppose you have to, don't you, eventually, if you want to describe some of that. Why? Just well, use the words that exist, isn't well, that the no, rule? No, but we know that's why we borrow from other languages. There are certain phrases that can't be translated, because mm. there, there, there are no words in other languages for them. Mm. I mean, we, I think we beat the second language by about double. I what think language? We, I, I think in English, we have got about, I think Russian second, but I think we got twice as many words. So there are obviously things that we say that cannot really be translated. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, ours is just great for, uh, obviously, poetry and... It and makes that. sense when you think about things like blancmange. Blancmange is good, yeah. That would be like wobbly pudding I know. in English. But I think if there are about, I don't know how many there are, some of them are, so there's about 100,000 possibilities, right? I think we, we probably know, as educated people like us, Steve, we probably have about 20,000. Sure. Right? 
I really don't think we need that other 80,000. No. I can't, I, I'm not walking around going, I don't know what they're talking about. Exactly. I'm really, what did he say? What yes. is that? I mean, that happens possibly once or twice a year hmm. when I go, what, sorry, what does that, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Carl, you look bored, mate. We had a real I, conversation I think there. he switched off when I said forsooth. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Forsooth, you know him. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 so much better than last week. You know him, don't you? Carl? Got a song on, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. boards. Okay, there was a monkey, right? Ah, no, he's no, no he's right, right. Up. It was a professor of English. <laughs> Cold outside, but I don't blame. No blue sky. The Thorns. That's beautiful, isn't it? On XFM 104.9. Carl, you're losing your rag a little bit. What's the matter? Nothing. Go on. See? What's the matter? No, what, what's well, the matter, I've got something to cheer him up. Someone's okay. emailed in, Emma's emailed in, she said that, um, <laughs> for those that know, those in the know, they referred to Lanzarotti as <laughs> Lanzagrotti. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> oh, He's well. a bit fed up. He's got two CDs for Christmas from a company that's he's been with for six years. Mm. He's a little, little bit grumpy about having to answer the phones. Mm. Yeah, he wouldn't go and make Steve another cup of tea immediately. <laughs> Selfish. Yeah. Carl, what are you thinking? Nothing. Go on, what are, you, what are you doing? Come on, Carl, you're getting paid for this. Project. Out. We'll take one of those CDs away. Alright. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? <clears throat> Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Sick of it, as I say. Mm. Um, so there's some people dressed up on TV. They were dressed up as the characters, they had that sort of costumes. There was a guy I remember, there was a guy I went to university with, uh, I don't want to mention his name, went into his room once, he's, he's into that sort of thing. In the, he showed me in his wardrobe, he had a full-size Star Trek outfit. <laughs> that his mum had made for him. That his mum had made yeah, for him! But I wanted to say, well A, you take this to university, but B, when are you going to wear that? Yeah! When are you ever in the mood to wear that? Well, you know, you never know when, uh, it, you know, like an Apollo 13, wasn't it, when someone had uh, measles or something, someone else got in. <laughs> sure. So you might go, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe it. The Enterprise, uh, uh, Uhuru can't make it. But it's the idea of that being, you know, I'm not one to speak, but it's that idea of that sort of being attractive to women. Because that's presumably generally when you're at university, when you're 18, 19, that's the reason you wear those kind of clothes, just to try and make a bond with someone, isn't it? Try and establish some kind of connection. Yeah. Saw a guy walking down the street the other day, must have been 18, 19, wearing an honest t-shirt, just had a picture, and the, the words, um, Star Wars Phantom Menace. <laughs> he probably likes But just the idea of a girl going, yeah, well I hey, like them as well. Yeah, yeah. They're supposed to be kind of kooky and eclectic t-shirts, aren't they normally? They're supposed to be a bit sort of radical and a bit my, offbeat. My favourite though are, um, I, I love fat goths. Yes. I really love Who fat goths. Who are still goths. persevering with it, even yeah, in their uh, 30s? Uh, yeah, I, I like your fat young ones. I love fat 18 year old goths. I really like them. They're uh, one of my favourites. And I like 42 year old goths. <laughs> yeah. Who, they, they're losing all their hair, they're just growing at the back. But, you know, I don't know, I don't know what jobs they do, but their, well, their main hobby is looking like Nosferatu and yeah. wearing lots of silverware. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's one of my favourites. I don't think I mentioned to you before, I saw a girl on the tube, she had a bag, and uh, she was quite gothy. She had a bag and it had, th it sort of had like a Barbie's head kind of sort of defaced or yeah. hanging from there and loads of badges and tassels and little motifs and odd things and she decorated the bag and then had sort of things like, you know, um, legalise cannabis and ban the bomb, you know, and stop the war. Yeah. And I just wanted to grab her and say, um, you doing much about the war or are you working mainly on the bag? <laughs> Yeah, you spent most of the year yeah, you've been in the Are yeah, you doing yeah. the marches? Collecting like badges. The bag you're focused on? Oh dear. I'll tell you another thing, that one, a fashion mistake it always offends me whenever I see it, is an Englishman, yeah. of any age, yeah. wearing cowboy boots. I had cowboy boots. I, I, tell I can't you, believe it. I've, when I was 18, right, I, um, I went out and got a pair of cowboy boots. The cheapest, like, I mean, they were the only ones I could afford. Awful. Why? I mean, was that they, were like, in... they were like clogs that came up to the knee. They were so uncomfortable. And why, and why did you get them? What, who was wearing them at the time that you that, that you thought they were cool? Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. And I, I had cowboy boots. I put segs in them. What segs? With the little things you nailed into the bottom. So right? they sort of clip clop at you. Clip clop. So I'm about 18, right? Uh, those tight jeans. <laughs> So tight, in fact, I thought I'd, I, I had to went to the doctor and I said, my balls are aching. And I went off, I said, oh, I've got a pain in my epididymis and all this, which I was doing biology. And he went, your jeans are too tight, they're squashing your balls. <laughs> right? Uh, so I had cowboy boots, right? And pale ones, not even sort of like finished properly, sort of like just the 
raw sort of leather, cheap wooden bits at the bottom sex, really tight Levi's, <laughs> and a red sweatshirt with bullshit on it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a present. Just I, it on. I looked pretty hot, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, and I remember once as well, this was, this is really embarrassing. I had leather jacket, and, uh. How old were you? Oh, this is embarrassing. 26, I think. And I just had a nice leather jacket, right? But I was bored one day, and so it's about, uh, 1986, 87. Yeah. 87, must have been. And, uh, I just painted on the lapel <laughs> a little acid. <laughs> 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 and that didn't last. And were I, you going to Acid House uh, Rage uh, No, of course not. No, no. But, but I remember, I remember that one didn't last long. That was in the bottom of the wardrobe immediately. Yeah. I knew at the time, I just thought, what the, what yeah. is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, I, I forgive anyone, sort of anything up to about the age of 25, right? I don't know. But I mean, it's getting close there, yeah, but certainly up to the age of 20. But it's the 40 year olds. It is yeah. the 40 year olds that yeah, yeah. just still have a little, have a little go. Goths are the best. Goths but, but, are goths the best. Goths or, or the cowboy stuff, because there's never been a culture of cowboys in this country. I know, You know, yeah. so you see the 40-year-old guy with the kind of cowboy jacket with the tassels. Yeah. You know, or the bootleg tie. Add that, add that, add that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you've been through most phases. This is what's been interesting to me about you, is you're yeah. now, you're quite self-aware. But the most committed one was probably the New Romantic when I first went to university, so, uh, you know, uh, 18, red bullshit t-shirt and tight jeans, within a couple of months, D David Sylvian, just, just full makeup and yeah. that, that, that. Can that. I ask, because I, having never really subscribed to one of those fashions, yeah. one of those stars, yeah. with something like New Romantic, which is, you've got to be quite committed, do you ease into that slowly, start wearing a bit of nail polish, maybe an earring, and then you work no, your way in, or you first, went whole hog? No, I remember the first time I did it, um, was the sort of like the first disco in my first year, um, just, uh, borrowed someone's makeup, put it on, stopped at the chin, hadn't quite got the... <laughs> So right. I looked like a, sort of like a mannequin. Right. And then I sort of got better at it, I suppose. Right. Why right. did it look like David Sylvian? That, yeah. that was the idea, and then it sort of And like so you had to in. literally go out and sort of start again with your wardrobe, presumably. The cowboy boots went out, the tight jeans. You had to literally go to a shop and buy an outfit, a new romantic outfit. No, it was okay, because in those days it was a suit. So new, right. it was a new romantic, you wore the suit. It, oh, I, right. didn't, I didn't wear all the sort of like um, pirate gear and pixie boots. Right, I sort right. of wore the suit. And, the, and luckily, I, before I went away, um, I bought a suit for my mum's catalogue. Which is one of those woolen <laughs> ones that went bobbly. <laughs> so <laughs> not quite David Sylvia. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, at least I was having a go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, respect. Have respect. you ever subscribed to any of those fashions, Carl? Uh, nah, just, uh. Just going for the gay look now, aren't you? Where's Ben Sherman's and he shaves his head? I remember watching some Dr. Martins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my mum worked at a college in a canteen. <laughs> and, uh, she knew what it wanted some, but she got some, uh, there was an old woman who worked in the canteen. He said she had some, and it turned out to be like little granny boots. Having <laughs> <laughs> them for a bit, <laughs> with a little zip up the front. Yeah. Nice. Oh, brilliant! Did you wear them for a bit? Yeah, oh, you yeah. might as well. Want not? Uh, <laughs> waste not, want not. Play a record. Have some ads. All right. White stripes. The hardest button to button. Steve, I've got to find out the answer. Mm -hmm. It's been driving me mad. How many words are there in the English language? Does anyone know? Define your terms. By English language, you mean English words. words yeah, I don't, I don't mean how many words are there in a dictionary with all slang, different, uh, derivative. How many, how many English words are there that you say were English words, you know, not, not, not but there are so many of them. Which yeah, but not phrases, from... not 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 slang necessarily. Not not. But what about English words which are derived from French, Celtic, or the rest of it? Well, like, your know, cliche is okay, but they have in they have load they yeah you know, they have other languages in them. But how many different English characters are there? Right. Because uh, uh, there were some news. Characters. There was some yeah. new, some news a few weeks ago about uh, a fella who could, if you said a word to him, right. He'd say, yeah, that's on page 36 of the dictionary, right? And they said he remembered 80,000 words, right? So that's in a little dictionary. They said it's 80,000 words. Mm -hmm. Right, so does that clear that up? Well, I thought there was about 100,000, right, English words in use. Not counting all the, the other little bits and pieces, phrases, uh, slang. Like, I think... I is in there now. Ali G, 
popular. Now, I don't know whether I should count that or not. Well, if you're one of our listeners, um, perhaps if you know somebody who finished school, <laughs> you could maybe pop next door, get them, ask them, and then email in the answer, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, if you've got an answer for that. Talking of email correspondence, Rockbusters. Oh, Rick is okay. underway. People Have we got monkey news? Absolutely loving that. Let's see if we can cram it in. Have we got a film? Yeah. We should do that then. Well, let's well, finish one thing and move on. Jesus, oh, yeah. All right, right, Rockbusters. We, uh, let's get this third one out of the way because it's tricky. Yeah. Um, so when you say tricky, it's tricky to say. <laughs> <laughs> the initials were AP. It was, uh. Well, you take, you your, take dog your dog out on that, or maybe on a Sunday. You know, Come on, let him finish quick! Let him finish. You take your dog there. You might go there on a Sunday. Uh, have a taste of it when you're there. Right? That was AP. Uh. The answer? Alex Parks. Right? <laughs> Alex. Alex Parks? Yeah. It kind of doesn't work, that one. D but. That what, one doesn't work, I, I, I know. I, I know, it's you know, you know that one doesn't work? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, well that's, well, what, that's, that's, that's what I was trying to work out when you were messing around. That's what why messing it's not around? good. Okay, come on. The, the other ones. The first one was, uh, the German fella. Be can't do any photos because it's been nicked. What's the German that? fella can't do any photos because it's been nicked. That was, uh... Uh... The initials were? AC. I've got it. That's right. It, it, it's, it's, it's Aztec camera. Yeah. But what's that got to do with the German fella nicking it? Because the way he'd say it, he'd be like, you know, as Doug camera. <laughs> so why aren't you taking any pictures? Can't. Why? As Doug camera. Why is that German? <laughs> Just sounds a bit. Right, so you know that's rubbish then as well. You know that one doesn't work, do you? And the, the second one was, uh, if you keep eating, this bit of your body will get bigger. PC. Yeah. Phil, Phil colon. <laughs> Phil... Phil, Phil Cole, Phil. <laughs> it's uh, honestly right, Carl. Phil I, 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 Phil honestly, Collins. right, okay. I honestly, I don't know what the PC term is for this, but I honestly think, I, I think you're quite bright, and I think you're quite streetwise and all that things. But I actually think, oh, I've got to be so careful here not to offend people. But I think you might be. Could you maybe describe it through a sound? Um, you might be educationally subnormal. Does that worry you? No. I've got, I've, you know, got by all right. I'm not going to worry about it now. You know what I mean? I'm 30. You know what I mean? Why start worrying about it now? But you've got the mind of a 12-year-old. <laughs> so what? Sure. You know what I mean? I don't worry about stuff. If you don't know about stuff, you don't worry about it. Yeah. So I'm happy. Well, if he's educationally subnormal, I'm afraid also Matt Briggs of South East London is as well. well done, he got right. Well done. Well done, Matt. Yeah. So he's won that stuff. He has indeed. Play record, we've also got your film quiz coming up and uh, Monkey News, we're all looking forward to that. Right. Monkey News. Letter Bowie? Yeah, one of my favourite Bowie songs of all time, Letter to Hermione from Space Oddity. Oh. Have you got any Christmas shopping? I'm not sure I can do that now. <laughs> right. Letter to Hermione, David Bowie. Well, we've had uh, the most convincing answer. That it's about 290,000 actual words, but possibly 3 million in our vocabulary, using all jargon and scientific stuff and all that. Sure. 290,000. Still a lot, isn't it? It is a lot. We know so little, don't we? Apparently the average person has about 20,000 words in oh, their vocabulary right. and uses maybe 2,000 a week. Really? Yeah. Carl, obviously, slightly bringing that average down. Carl, look at that. Single figures. What's well, matter? Get by. Why have you got to use longer words messing about and that? <laughs> Told you. That that word about old, anti dipuian or something. Just say old. <laughs> That's a bit old, isn't it? That's a bit anti to and that. What's the point? Yeah. Get to the point. Sure. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Are you in a film this week, Carl? Uh, are we doing that now? Yeah, go on. Get it over with. Get it over with. Let's get this show show over with. We can go home. You can go off to Lanzarote and sit on some ash. <laughs> some charcoal. <laughs> He's not happy about that. That's annoyed him. The listeners have all ganged, ganged up, up on him. him. Yeah. Uh, XFM giving him two CDs. We've had more calls for his resignation this week than ever before. What is that, Carl? What do you mean? There's another reason. Do you know what I mean, though? Because he's grumpy. He's not just giving it. He goes, well, I can't have it, can I? I don't want it. You, you're paid well to do a job. 
people have tuned in to be entertained, to have good songs. Me and Steve are, are working I'm pressing here. the buttons. I'm paid to press the buttons. That's what I'm doing. Has every CD started on time? Then yeah. Why'd you, why, why would they give you Monday off if you were just paid to press the buttons? Don't get every other Monday off, do I? So have you stopped doing that now, have you? Well, yeah. Why? Because there's work to do in that. But I'm not moaning about it. Let's get on with it. Right, Scrooge, right, is the film that I'm in. Thought I'd do a Christmassy one. Okay. Right? Yeah. Get people in the Christmas mood and that. Yeah, yeah. you have, yeah. You have got people in the Christmas mood. You're uh, like Santa visiting them. Right. <laughs> so... It's you listen. in the film Scrooge. Yeah. Which yeah. version of Scrooge? The old one. Is it if it's just you moaning with bells, I'll be annoyed. Right, right. That is essentially Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, Scrooge, listen to this and then there's some question at the end. All right. And you can win some stuff and that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Late. Only, only 20 minutes. What do you mean by coming in here at this time of day? Hmm? I've just, I've just been doing some Christmas shopping, haven't I? Probably do some more shopping on Monday because it's my day off, isn't it? Yes, I know it is. You don't have to tell me. You've got to see what I've bought, Suzanne? No, thank you. I don't mind showing you. It's only, only Christmas present, isn't it? Bought some more, uh, bought some more condoms. Why? Well, I bought some last year. Got two boxes. Uh, they all got used, so... I'm very glad to hear it. How much do I pay you? Why are you asking? To the presents of mine has got nothing to do with what I earn. Like I say, if I, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't go mental on her. Do you know what I mean? I probably wouldn't even tell her because... I think she'd want to travel around the world and all that, and I'm not into that, to be honest, so I'd probably keep it quiet. Why? Well, once you've been around the world, where do you go next year? <laughs> Each to their own, though, isn't it? You know what I mean? Well, what do you want? What? Well, for Christmas. Not that fussed, really. I knew it's, it's just as well I'm not that fussed, because do, do you know I do some work at, um, at XFM? Do you know what they're giving me for, for Christmas present? Nothing. No. Might, might as well have been nothing. Um, two CDs. That's it. I was well fed up. I'm sure you were. They give you a list of about 30 albums and you get to pick two off the list. So I've gone for, um, Kings of Leon album. And, uh, the best of Bob Marley. Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. In fact, he died seven years ago this very day. Do you know, uh, do you know what sort of donuts Bob Marley likes? It's not my business. No, it's, it's not a proper question. It's an old Peter Kay joke. He likes the ones with jamming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Garlic bread. Excellent. Carl in Scrooge there. Um, <laughs> the only man more mean <laughs> and depressed generally than Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh dear. Oh. What's the God. question, Carl? Uh, well, if people have been listening from the start, right? Uh, what albums am I getting? Yeah. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. What albums am I getting from, uh, for working for this place for six years? <laughs> All right? <laughs> Ricky Dodger Mays at xfm.co.uk. Sweet music. Snow Patrol and Run on XFM. Wow. Nearly your last show, Carl, for about three weeks. Yeah. Carl's off to Lanzarote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hoo, hoo, hoo. next week, uh, we're doing it with Ian Canfield next Saturday. Then we're off, because it's day after Boxing Day, isn't it? Or 20, yeah. And then, um, we're back on the 3rd, I think, aren't we, all together? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, what have you got? I think we should have done something like some roundups, like Cheeky Freak of the Week. We could have done Cheeky Freak of the Year. What's your Freak of the Year, Carl, if I put it to you? What, out of all the ones that I found out about? Yeah, all the ones that have ever been, yeah. Well, no, you have the Elephant Man in there that you found out about at the end of the century. Go on. Um, 
watched the Elephant Man again last week. Did? Good. Yeah, I loved it. Um, probably that one, uh, the kid who was like, like seven, but aged to about 38. That was pretty weird. That amazed me. That blew sort of no, she was about, no, it was worse than that. She was about 90 or so, wasn't she? She is now. But, but back then. Oh, oh, a couple of months ago she was 38, yeah. but because of the ageing. She's, she's she, sort of aged fast and that. Yeah. And it's really, uh, This is the one that you think should be allowed to get fags and beer and off licence because she's got the body of a 90 year old. Well, yeah, it's only fair. <laughs> Let her have a decent life. Even though she's six? If she wants a packet of fags. The doctor said, you know, you're older than that. Even though you're six, you are sort of 72. If she wants a packet of fags, let them have them. She was 72 in September, wasn't she? Yeah. So, yeah. But it was that, that's probably Do you actually think that would be a good idea to have a, to give a six-year-old with an aging disease a packet of fags? If that's and a, what they want, if that's a, what they want. And a pint of tenants. All the stress and that she goes through. It was saying something about how she has to have a passport picture done every three months or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Wow. That's what she's dealing with. So that, that was probably the way- Can we just say that Carl doesn't take the mickey out of these freaks? No. Of these people. He- I just, you know, it's things that fascinate me at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yeah. Things like that are weird. Um, and things that, I mean, there's certain things that people get excited about that I think, well, what are you getting excited for? Like what? Um, news, just news. Do you know I normally do the headlines and that? Yeah. Uh, Have we got any headlines? Not really, because there isn't that much going on. Isn't that, there? This is what annoyed me though, there was something <laughs> about a woman who's going up Everest on a bike. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And they were like, oh, brilliant. But I don't think that's that good. When someone's done it walking, where would, the, where, would the woman, where would the woman who complained about you come in the years chart? That's what the, you mean? Yeah, that's the woman with the enormous head. Best we forget. Yeah. She took offence to some of the comments you made on the show, and rightly so. I can't, yeah, yeah, I, quite quite so, yeah. I, was, I was out of order, and, you know, so I'm sorry about that. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I'll just explain again that Carl, I mean, it was, a, it was a, it's, the freak of the week is sort of like more of a punchy catchphrase than, than a derogatory term, mm. in, uh, and Carl's fascination and childlike, I mean, I think we'd have to include Carl in the roundup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd be certainly well, be in the, the top fact, ten. I think the fact that she didn't sort of, pursue any official complaints means that, you know, she's a bigger person than you, Carl. Yeah, really, because, you know. Certainly, you know. Well, you know, so. <coughs> <laughs> Headwise. <laughs> she is. Um, Carl, you're going to do some news. Story, you well, the, the, like I said, there hasn't been that much going on. There's a sure. story about a fella who, uh, hasn't eaten for 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh. He hasn't eaten, is that all the, that's all the information you're going to give us? Yeah, hasn't okay. eaten for 70 years, uh, hasn't had a drink, but he's alright. <laughs> That's rubbish then, next. It's not rubbish. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, uh, well, what, well, what is it? How is that? How is a man not eaten or drunk for 70 years? It's that thing, isn't it? Your, your belly gets used to it or something. <laughs> Steve, has he misinterpreted it or is it rubbish? It, well, it does, to be honest with you, it doesn't actually offer any explanation, it just says that it, that's what happened. Right, so that's rubbish. doesn't go on to Next. anything else. Um, a woman's had six organs transplanted. Um, woman needed a new kidney, a new heart, a new stomach, a new liver, a uh, new kidney, intestine. Does that mean that she's the same woman? I know. Yeah, You'd yeah. just say forget it, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't you though? <laughs> well, not really. You know, the organ is just a, a lump of tissue. If you're, you're that, if you're that knackered. Call it a day. <laughs> uh, don't waste time on that. Yeah. And, yes, uh, good there's advice. A woman, there's a woman who um, who hasn't slept for eight years as well. Well, that's that's impossible. Again, you want to see that, Steve? Yeah. So that's that's the news for the week. Yeah. Oh, rubbish. So Next. Next. Do you want to apologise once more for anyone you might have offended over the year? Yeah. I, I, like I say, I always I never well, upset anyone. We're no. Just it's just, about just, stuff just, it's just chatting. It's, it's from the heart. You see someone, you say, oh, it looks a bit like so-and-so, or isn't it a bit, you're not really, you know, you mm. don't really try and uh, hurt anyone's feelings, do you? But I think, I think most people know that. And I mean, I, and I've got to apologise for laughing at anything you say, I actually can't help it. Again, it's not vindictive, but when Carl comes up with some of the things he says, I, I mean, I, it's impossible for me not to laugh or react. So, uh, have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, before that, Rick, is there some final, um, for the year, monkey news? Tell you what, let's play a, a good song. 
Okay. Right, I'll have a bit of Monkey News and then that's it. A All bit right. of Amy Man then. Perfect. Yep. Brilliant, this one. No Choice in the Matter by Amy Man on XFM 104.9. Well, uh, now it's, uh, it's Monkey News. Well, before Monkey News, Rick, can I just mention to people if they enjoyed that version of Free Love Freeway that we played earlier? on the show, the kind of alt-country version. Yeah. That was by Ben O'Sullivan, and hopefully if you check out his website, if you're interested, you probably can download something, or maybe he'll uh, tell you when he's going to release it. That's benosullivan.com, one word, benosullivan.com. Good luck to Ben, happy new Christmas to him, and new year, best of. Yeah, <laughs> rearrange these words into a well-known phrase <laughs> of the time of year. <laughs> yeah. Initials, MC. <laughs> okay, um, Okay. Play the jingle. Oh! What is it? Chimpanzee that. Oh, yeah. Chimpanzee that, monkey news. Right, well, the last one of the year. <clears throat> it's not that good, but this is all that's been going on all week. Yeah. Uh, little Monkey. Um, what happened is, it's this plane, right? Aeroflot, I think it is. Russian airline. Um, <laughs> having a good, having a good flight. Everything's going normal and that. This is gonna be libelous. The, the pilot, sorry, I mustn't interrupt my side. The, the, was, how tall was the pilot on this flight? Okay, listen, we've had a few complaints, people saying, don't but, interrupt, uh, don't interrupt Steve. Monkey News. Okay. Don't interrupt Monkey okay, News. Okay, I won't then. It. It's like okay. the weather girl complaining whilst Trevor McDonald's doing that. Okay, all right. Go on then. Right. Go on then. All right, so, uh, the, you know, the flight's going well, food's been served and all the rest of it. Anyway, someone gets upset about not having many nuts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. right, they've not got enough nuts. Oh, they, okay. hand the, they hand the nuts out and that, one of the sort of passengers is going mental. What, what's, he, what's he saying? He's just, he's just What language mad. is he talking though? Is he Russian or English? So anyway, there's a bit <sighs> of a fight going on, a fight starts happening, people are going, what's up with that little fella, right? The little hairy bloke. So, uh, they, they sort of drag what's, what's wrong with Bob Hoskins? And why is he screaming? Why isn't he talking in his usual Cockney accent? Why is Bob Hoskins screaming and grabbing at nuts? So, um... You've ruined it. Right? <laughs> come on, come no, on! Forget oh, it, forget oh, it. Right, right, I'm ruined! Right, Rick, turn his microphone off, Okay. can interrupt you. So anyway, so there's a fight going on, nuts are going everywhere, right? So, um, anyway, so they, they manage to tie him down, they get him on the floor, tie his legs up and that, right? His little legs. Get him to the- get him to <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come See on! See Have a good Christmas. No! Oh, how dare you! Finish the story! All that happened is, they got back, uh, it turned out that he shouldn't have been on the plane anyway. Why? His passport wasn't valid. Right. Um, and you can't cause problems on planes and that. So, he got put in a cell for a bit, turned out it was a little monkey. All right. Quick question, how did he complain about the shortage of nuts? Yeah. He just was going mental. Right, he didn't actually call over a stewardess, he just- Well, how did, you, how did he get on the plane in the first place? Right. What ticket did he have? Have a good Christmas and that. But you know it's rubbish. You so must right, know that's rubbish. Right. You the the must best. know that's rubbish. All the best. You must know that's rubbish. Where is he going? XFM. Comfort and Sound by Feeder on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. But no Carl Pilkington. No He's Carl. in Lanza Grotti. Lanza Grotti. <laughs> but we have speak. got a very, very special stand-in. It's Camfield. Say hello. I'm so excited to be here. It's yeah. been, you know, I, I, the things I've learned in the last ten minutes before we've even got on air. Like, you yeah. don't have a theme tune. I don't have a theme tune, I don't wear headphones. Exactly. Ian wears headphones with a preamp. He's got three midgets just brought in his back line. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> they're called Dog, Mongo and Blitzkrieg. Look, Blitzkrieg is up on the, up there, like, eating a banana. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he is the king of rock, the new king of rock. Well, the young, the prince, he's the prince of rock. Obviously Vance is the king of rock. But uh, we'll be doing that, we're working out who. Oh, over this, um, and by the way, Camfield, I don't want the Ian Camfield that does XFM and go, and there's fast approaching 123, here's Ash. I want the Camfield that goes, I snorted ants with Lemmy. Okay? So, <laughs> uh, we want the real Camfield. Alright, right. I bought him Metal Christmas, is that alright? Yeah. My, that's my only request from this show, that we do play Paul Diano's version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. The Diano. Rest, the rest of That'll this be up to you. Yeah, we're gonna play some Christmas tunes, we're gonna play some, you know, our favourite hits of the year, but mm -hmm. mainly, this is the rock program. This is the rock program. What worries me, Rick, is there's a lot of people who listen to our show and they don't really, they're not regular XFM listeners, they just kind of crawl They're not regular people. stupid <laughs> <laughs> on a Saturday yeah. afternoon, put the show on, so yeah. they might not, they might not be familiar with, they might not be familiar with well, the Well, Ian work. Canfield is a young man, he's been in, uh, he's, he's about uh, 14. He's, he's been in radio, it's weird, he's 14, but he's been in radio for fifteen and a half years. <laughs> yeah, um, he was weaned on the milk of Vance. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, uh, he's gonna be the new, he's gonna be the new, um, uh, rock god, aren't you? Well, I'm trying. Yeah. 
um, uh, no, no DJ Camfield. Just go, yeah, right? <laughs> and over the, over the two hours, um, I wanna work out the four pillars of rock, right? I want four names, uh, four pillars of rock, right? Huge rock pillars, and then I want the king who stands astride them like the archangel of metal. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll be asking Ian, every few years we we'll ask him, right, who's your first pillar of rock? And then, uh, you know, keep keeping the one that stands astride them, okay? And how many do we need? Well, we need five names then, don't we? The four pillars of rock and who stands astride them. <laughs> right, okay. okay. Like the Overlord with these Axe Attack albums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Oasis. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Doing their version of Merry Christmas, everyone. It's Christmas. It seems only appropriate that we play the occasional Christmas tune. There aren't many decent ones. The great. We will be playing the greatest, not just Christmas. One of the greatest songs of all time, but certainly the greatest Christmas tune of all time. Mm -hmm. Fairy Tale in New York. Is that going to be the um, the uh, version done by what's his name at a boy zone? Has he done one? Yeah. Because he's lived the hard rock and roll life. Uh, uh, life what's his name? What is his name? Ronan Keating. Yeah. He yeah. wasn't bad on Room 101, actually. I think he's lightened up a little bit. Good luck to him. Yeah. Yeah, no, as well. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, uh, Canfield, I'm sure you can, uh, kind of, uh, you've probably got experiences of your own that you might want to talk about, but, uh, people ask me what Ricky's like in real life. Mm. And I don't want to get grotesque, it's Christmas, people are listening, people are eating sandwiches, but he has a flatulence problem. I don't know if you're aware of this. It is- It's not a problem. Right. Well, it is for us. <laughs> it is for us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you may not yeah. I think no. the problem with Ricky is Ricky hates to miss out on anything. He's terrified that there's gonna be something going on that he's missing out on. A conversation, a joke, someone falling over, you know. <laughs> and, uh, he's down- he, so he don't spend any time in the lavatory, cause he just- it's too- <laughs> any sp period of time he spends in there, he could be missing out on some fun. <laughs> so he, he kind of tries to get his lavatory, you know, occupying down- time down to a minimum, an absolute minimum. Plenty of pissing. There's loads of that, but none of the other activity, <laughs> really. I mean, you keep that, really, it's, it's like you're in, you're out, and you, I d sometimes I don't think you've done the full job, Rick. Yeah. And today, I'll tell you this, it was, my eyes were bleeding. <laughs> it was, it was intense. I, it's just a word of warning, because the kitchen at XFM is out of bounds now. <laughs> they, don't, no one's going in there until the new year. A to J in the library. And a to J in the record library. I'll tell you this, if, I don't know if, like, Tony Blackburn's in the building. <laughs> his wig will fall off. But seriously, not that he, about, no, no, not that he wears a wig, he doesn't wear a wig. But if he's going down there, maybe he wants to play some Beach Boys, I mean, seriously, <laughs> forget I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> forget you might have survived in the jungle, Tony. <laughs> you get uh, down there, mate. Tony, would you rather eat a plate of maggots or go and get oh, Beach Boys? Exactly. And say A to J. Oh, pot pickers. Exactly. Jesus Christ. It is absolutely <laughs> extraordinary down there. <laughs> oh, so well, I'll just be warned. But it's Christmas. Yeah. It's Christmas. Why would Blackburn be listening to this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he's got- he's probably doing a bit of Christmas shopping. Sure. And yeah. he's out and about with his- probably got his little, you know, personal stereo on. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I'll listen to the boys at XFM. <laughs> exactly. And he, uh, Canfield, what do you think of it so far? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's not- not Vance, is it? Okay, who- who, who is secured as one of the pillars of rock? Lemmy. Of course he is. Never changes his boots. Two pairs of trousers. Three shirts. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he just alternates them, does he? Yeah, so yeah, he might yeah. Have the same pair of trousers for two weeks, but the is it, shirt. is it true his rider is uh, a bottle of Jack Daniels and forty Marlboro? Uh, no, it's uh, it's like one of those hundred packs. No. Of, of yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the hundred packs of Marlboro, and the, he like keeps them stuck in his boots, which don't change. <laughs> um, actually, I, I think I'm right in saying like that, that one of the like two left boots as well because one of them did break so and he had two pairs but he's now only got one but they uh, uh he's got yeah the well, and Lemmy, that is Lemmy then Lemmy as one of the um the uh, pillars of rock what, what, what would Phil Linnock get anywhere near this yeah he would have done let's play some Lizzie then. <laughs> Don't believe a word, Finn Lizzy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant, and over there, Cam Fools. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your impression of me? Yeah. 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 The rock one's better. The rock one's better. Yeah, you shouldn't <laughs> try and be a DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up with Diano Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian, what, uh, I know you're, you're keen to know this, Rick. What are your thoughts on XFM? What, you, you get, uh, just get behind the facade of Cam yeah. What do you think about this? Because we used to have, you know, some conversations, uh, you know, um, You've been with XFM since the beginning, haven't you? I've been here forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all right, isn't it? I mean, it's not—it's not quite magic. Well, no, I know a few got, things are. You know, got me eyes on the on the on the you know, big 105.4, obviously, eventually. What uh, magic? Yeah. Now, uh, do you do you think you you want to do like a a rock program on something like like Virgin or Radio One eventually? No, I don't think so. No. No. What do you want to do then? What do you want to do? <sighs> I want to. 
I want to start playing stuff like the Eagles and Steely Dan and Bruce Hornsby in the range, truth be known. But you, you'd have right. to go quite mainstream. Like in your bedroom? What, but, on a, but on but on what sort of platform though? Because you know the good thing about those is they are really popular. They are. I mean, I think the Eagles' greatest hits is the biggest selling album of all time now. It's overtaken Thriller. Yeah. So I mean that that, that those. What are you saying? Iron Maiden aren't popular. Uh, like well, what I play Iron now. Are actually popular, but they've got a very Slipknot tight fan Fear base. Factory. I mean, the, the Iron Maiden can go to number one with just their fans buying it and then slip away again, can't they? Yeah. But everyone sort of likes the Eagles, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I think still. So you could play, so you could get on sort of like Radio, Radio 2 maybe, the rock program on Radio 2, who does it at the moment, is there one? No, there's not one, should we, I should do a demo rock, okay. maybe. Okay, well that's, a, let's, let's I love the way we're talking about my career and other radio stations I could work for. Well, do you yeah. know something I don't? No, no, <laughs> no I'm just saying that this, this, this is going, not, it's going, going on the tube, it? it's going on the tube. I mean, you're gonna be like, I mean, you're, you, 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 <laughs> You'd abandon the sink and shit, wouldn't you? You wouldn't hang around, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't fiddle, as Rome burned. I mean, we, we've got a couple of pies cooking in the States, so we're not gonna be here to keep it afloat. No. You know, the weekend. Well, we, 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 you know, we wanna take the good guys with us. Right. So, you know, when this crumbles and they make it into a car park for capital, I want to see you on Radio 2, Friday nights, 10 till 12, pure rock. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Right, well, that's the pitch, isn't it? There Friday nights, the... 10 to 12, pure rock. Okay, if someone, anyone's listening to the BBC, it's Canfield. He is the new, new fan, fans. Mul Molten metal, maybe. Molten metal. That's good. My only concern with TV work for, uh, for Ian is he doesn't look like the obvious rocker. I mean, people are listening, they probably imagine no, he's got the long, the, greasy hair, but he's that's got the, the modern the look. t-shirt. Lots of modern bands no, now, I've, they've got, you I'm know. I'm not slagging off, I'm just saying I wonder the, if the they've fans. They've got short hair. It's not all, it's not all long hair and strange beards and tattoos, No, the, the, the days of them all looking like Lemmy and smelling like Ricky sure. are <laughs> well, and, well and truly gone, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had the long hair? Have you ever gone in for that? No. Never, never tried that? No, no, no. But I've got bullet belts and stuff like that. You're right. You know, if you'd have wanted me to dress up, I would mm. have dressed up and brought CDs. I mean, you know, obviously I should have prepared more for this show. Sure. Yeah. Really? We're gonna, we're, <laughs> we've got, we're gonna, we're gonna play some classic rock, aren't we? I think we're gonna play The Who. And we've got, we got Jump, Van Halen, that's a classic, well, Yeah, it? I think I've got that about five times on every driving album I brought in for you. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, Are we gonna we're play we're... Since You've Been Gone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's cool. next? Uh, British Sea Power. Yeah, I thought yeah. we should play a couple of singles that, uh, we've enjoyed over the yeah. last year or so, and this is one of them. Carry on. Play at Camford. And don't forget, uh, Paul Diano and Santa Claus is coming to town is coming on as well. Paul Diano doesn't snort ants, he snorts ants. Carry on from, from, uh, British Sea Power on XFM 104.9. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Now listen, we should just uh, point out to people that, uh, we're <laughs> Carl's away. You know, we always slag him off because he, he provides very little. But and he's an idiot. Well, exactly, to be fair. But he's obviously off in uh, Lanza Grotti, and he's forgotten to tell us what the password is for our email, Rick. Idiot. So we can't get into the email. Uh, so we're not gonna have to use Ian's email instead. Ian.camfield at xfm.co.uk if you wanna get in touch. You're never gonna have so many emails, Ian. Really? Yeah, this right? gonna, you're gonna be looking at them all, all week. It's gonna be brilliant for <laughs> you. You're gonna feel really <laughs> popular. You know what? He described Carl as a bald little mank twat. Nice. Carl was going... Brilliant. Is that allowed? Is that all right? Yeah. Bless him. Bald little mank twat. He's back on the third, isn't he? Well, if there's one thing that that magazine. Well, what was he suggesting? Accuracy. You can't be regionalist. Yeah. What? It was he suggesting you can't be regionalist. Is that allowed? No, I just think it's a familiarity of. Uh, it's just because we call him a bald little mank twat that a national <laughs> a national <laughs> magazine can say that. <laughs> oh, bless his little round head. Wonder what he's doing now. He's sitting in the ash, reading his, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh reading his Rich Hall book. <laughs> yeah, he, oh. spe he spent a week when he went to, uh, where was it? St. Lucia. He spent a week, right? <laughs> throwing sand at crabs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they've even got crabs have they, over there. No, I don't, no, There's I don't nothing. know what he's gonna do. What is he gonna do? I'm Suzanne, what is she gonna do? He's gonna be whinging. But it's, it's sort of like, Carl must be like a kid, you must like sit him in front of a video mm. while you go and make the dinner or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be a nightmare to, taking a pet. Has he got a little, she got a little harness for him? To be fair though, Rick, I mean, I can't imagine you're much better <laughs> on holiday. <laughs> I've always wondered what that must be like. Because you always need an audience. You've always got to have someone around that you can perform for, drop your trousers for. <laughs> annoy. Annoy, just generally sing and dance about. And, you know, Jane Seno, she's bored of you. Yeah. So what, do you just do this to other people on the beach? <laughs> Holiday makers, it is me. You can't believe you're not, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> okay. well, do, do, do you want me to annoy you? Do you want me to annoy you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy you for five minutes. Yeah. Cause yeah. then I'll get bored exactly. myself. I'll tell you what, I want some ads and after that the fairy tale in New York. Oh. Excellent. Oaks, featuring Kirsty McCall and uh, a fairy tale 
of New York. Brilliant. On XFM 104.9. That's the song I think that single-handedly keeps, uh, Shane McGowan in gin for another year. It must do Just well though. Beer. I'm I, sure it does. I absolutely love it. I yeah. still love it. I saw yeah. it on Top of the Pops too. And it's just, it's just brilliant. Mm. I mean, he, he wasn't great at miming, but it didn't bother me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> miming to a different song, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah in his yeah. head. It was great. Um, I had a little visit in the week, Rick. I think Go you missed on. that. A little Christmas visit from, uh, I know he's a friend of yours. He's a friend of anyone. He's a friend of the nation. Go on. Um, TV, uh, illusionist Darren Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's bought a new pad. Yeah. And, uh, he just came around to tell me about it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's interesting because- Somewhere uh, to keep his guns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, he, um, I, I can never know quite of how much, you know, he's just playing with your mind, experimenting. But yeah. he was telling me about the place, and apparently- say he loves you? <laughs> he's, uh, he's got a B-Day. In yeah. the, uh, in the house. Now, we were discussing B-Days because- never um, understood that. I've never got my head around it. To this he's day- He's not I've, meant to. Well, no. <laughs> but I've never- I don't think I've ever met anyone who's used a B-Day. Oh, uh, Darren Brown does. He's known as the cleanest ass in, uh, <laughs> modern magic. Yeah. Shiny. <laughs> Shiny ass, they call him. <laughs> but, uh, but I- cause I was- we were chatting about it. I don't really know- to be truthful, I don't really know how you use them. I don't well, know- Well, I assume you just sort of go over it and let- But do you face the wall with your knees on the- on the tiles, no, or do you I face away you, from the wall? No, it's sort of like you just, I don't, And no. you know it's got the little Do you sit on it, or do you sort of hover above it? Do you it? hover above it and just splash things onto the- No, it's a little jet, isn't it? It does it for you, doesn't but it? But is there a jet? This is what I'm wondering. Is yeah, there a jet of water that goes like, up the crack? It's like a, it's a drinking, like a drinking fountain That's you used to have in school. Yeah. Which, I, mean, I, I remember Mr. Mellows used to embarrass himself every time. I go, no, he's in the middle of Lego, Mr. Mellows. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bee day. You're not at your French, you know, yeah, cottage yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, bee day sounds French. Well, I'm assuming it's French. After, you know, I are probably so embarrassed about just sort of like squatting over a hole. Yeah. They go, well, at least we can clean it. Have they? Cause I haven't been to, uh, I haven't been to France for years, but are they still persevering with the they're public toilets, just the whole of the They're still going with I mean, I think they have is got- Is a single Frenchman travelled anywhere else in the world? Yeah. And seen that now- This is uncomfortable. Even... I know, my trousers go, go down- to that... Delhi, and I think uh, they're uh, probably yeah. decent porcelain. I know, I can't believe it. I think they have got the flush ones now, mainly right. for the tourists. <laughs> sure, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah, never yeah. really understood that. But it's I'm... not, you don't go in, it's not like the- cause they're literally crapping into an open sewer, aren't they? That's the French approach to the public lavatory. Do they have the bidet next to the hole? No, no, the the toilet is a toilet, isn't it? Right. But it's just, it's just like, it's sort of like a, it's like going in the bottom of a shower with a big hole at the bottom. Mm. But I, I don't and know- And just, do you you do, I mean again, not wishing to get graphic, but do you use the, uh, the bidet instead of the, the toilet paper? Is it used in conjunction with, or I, I instead mean, of? I mean, do you know what, I've, I, I, I've honestly, um, never used a bidet. Because it's not but... really a working class thing, is it, the bidet? No, but, uh, well it sort of came in with, with sort of like, um, purpose built houses, didn't it? They sort of like, shot up all over the- um, no pun intended. <laughs> All <laughs> over the sort of seventies, you know what I mean? It was like a, you know, a, a, in salmon pink. There was mm. toilet sink and bee day. Yeah, we won't yeah, be yeah. using the bee day. <laughs> exactly. Fill it with ice. Put some beer in that. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. none of my friends washes their arms. <laughs> there are people who refuse to touch their. You know, the, the, the hole with the hands and they only use a bee day so they throw it at a party and there's no bee day. Well, Carl doesn't like, don't like feeding his bollocks for cancer because he says he doesn't like the, doesn't like the texture of them. Sure. Well, so I mean, so he'd probably love a B-Day if he didn't but have to go- are there kind of upper-class women who just waddle into the, the dining room with <laughs> unsophisticated <laughs> trousers around their ankles going, where's the B-Day? Where's it's the- filthy. Where's the B-Day? I just, I don't know what- use the paper. The what? I think the fish was off. I'm going berserk up there, Yeah, uh, yeah th get me a B-Day. <laughs> yeah, what or, have you lot on the floor? Or I am climbing into the sink and turning the tap <laughs> upside down. <laughs> it's the only way I can do it. Yeah. B-Day. Thoughts on B-Days? Have you ever used one? Well, no, you've gone to, you told me all this, but you still haven't got to the bottom of how you use them. No, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, know, you know, know if you use it. Do they come, I asked, you need to ask Darren Brown, does it come with, like, instructions, like a flat pack? I think kit you're or supposed to know. I think you're supposed to, you, you know, if you've bought a B-Day, the assumption is you know how to use it. Imagine someone installing it and going, there you go, this will be day, go, can you show me how to use it? Well, be like this. Well, no, no, let's go to the toilet first. <laughs> do the whole thing, I don't, otherwise I'll write no in context. I'll just sit here in the corner, that's fine. Okay. You well, do, just, do, you uh, wanna, do you read a magazine when you're normally going? Well, I might do, but I mean, I don't really want to do it with you here, but how, how will I know? <laughs> exactly. What, you, I need to know how you transport yourself from the lavatory to the beach. Do you remember when we were trying to offer Carl money to have a shower with Johnny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just just some of the highlights of the year. <laughs> That's a weird thing to do! Yeah. We had it, we nearly had him there and then he didn't want us to watch. Yeah. We said, yeah. well, how do we know that you've done it or not? Yeah. He went, you are definitely bent. <laughs> <laughs> That's his conclusion. Uh, what, what we got lined up? Well, hang on, let's just say, if, uh, if anyone's got any idea, sort of, how to use a bidet, maybe- Any idea for anything to talk about on yeah. this show? Well, that, that doesn't involve crapping. <laughs> or yeah. We've done that. Um, yeah. 
We haven't, done, we haven't done little Chinese fellas or the gays yet. That's still to come <laughs> in the second hour. Ian.Camfield at xfm.co.uk if you've got any thoughts on uh, B-Days or just, you know, lavatories generally. Richard Ashcroft on XFM, check the meaning, I think it was out this year and we enjoyed it, so we I certainly it. had a, a thought then that, you know, someone like Richard Ashcroft, uh, who's really cool, I mean I think one of our greatest rock and rollers really, who mm -hmm. has great tunes, does great albums, uh, the Verve, you know, already I in history. Mm. I just suddenly thought of him listening to this and thinking I wish they wouldn't play my songs because I don't want to be associated mm. with that drivel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, said, yeah, you know, yeah. Is you know most people get a buzz out of it, get on the radio. Do you think people say don't, don't let Gervais guilty by action. association? Do you know what I mean? They've just been. They've. I. I. I love that song. I love Check the Mean. I thought it was a lovely song. And he's thinking they're going to sandwich it to been talk about little gay Chinese fellas and B days. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna make me look What worries bad. me, Rick, is that they'll, you know, if we had to draw up some kind of list of artists who would allow us to play their songs, it's gonna be such a short list. Gary Glitter, you know, it's gonna be a few people who, you know, are slightly more shameful than us. I just so, thought of something. Um, there are a billion people in China, mm -hmm. and I assume it's the same percentage of homosexuality occurs, as it were, that to a billion, one in ten, that means there's a hundred million Little gay Chinese fellas running around. Richard Think Ashcroft, if you're listening, I apologise <laughs> for that last. Think uh, about it. Morning, <laughs> are you okay? War is over. I had uh, a DJ in the in the week. I won't say who it was, um, but sort of like a cheesy sort of housewife choice DJ, and he played that, and he went. Hmm, weird one that, isn't it? What do you think of that the first time you heard it? Strange one. John Lennon, Yoko Ono, war is over. Here's the moment at least out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! Oh. What does he mean? That's exactly what I want from a DJ. <laughs> that yeah. kind of insight. <laughs> we were talking before the break about how many little uh, Chinese fellas there are. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, brilliant. Um, An awful lot of them. Brilliant, good. More than merrier. Are you familiar, Rick, with the fact, the scary fact, I don't know, Camford, if you're aware of this, and Go it's on. chilling. Uh, I don't know where I've heard this from, but apparently, and this is kind of legend, I didn't just make this up, this is well mm. known, that if all the Chinese people in China, right, no, come on, if they all jumped up and down at the same time, <laughs> apparently, this is, this is what they say, apparently it would cause a, tidal, a wave tidal wave that would wipe out America. That would destroy America. <laughs> I love the idea of coordinating that. Brilliant. Well, I like the idea, firstly, they don't need, um, weapons of mass destruction, they don't need nuclear weapons, because no. they got that threat They can't constantly. have one that, you can't count, you can't count a, no. a tidal wave as a weapon of mass destruction. Or jumping. Tony Blair could send in sort of people, you know, UN people going, look out for anyone jumping. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> all they need is an immense sort of skipping rope. Oh yeah, once a uh, little fellow in Japan holding yeah, one end, exactly. little fellow in Russia holding the other, <laughs> exactly, yeah. and they go on your marks. You'd have a lot of coordination over that one. Little Maybe like someone like Mr. Tricky. Motivator, kind of coordinating it all from yeah, the top yeah. of the wall, sort yeah. of looking down. The Chinese got, equivalent. Yeah, the Chinese, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, be because I think that's why they built the wall. I think that's why they built the to Great jump Wall. Off the wall. <laughs> exactly. They just climb on that wall. That's the way. It's there. That's the threat. And that's why America started the space race because yeah. you can see it from space. Exactly. <laughs> so they go. They're up there um, monitoring. This constantly. is uh, Eagle to uh, Houston. There's lots of little Chinese fellas about to jump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Houston. Are they wearing them? We just need hats? to confirm they're Chinese. Are they wearing <laughs> those? Uh, are they wearing those comical hats that look a bit like a lampshade? They, they are. They are. They are. <laughs> 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 they're Chinese. Because if well, I was the uh, if I was the leader of China, who, what is the name of the? What is it? Is he the king of China? We're so ill-educated. Is aren't it we? the king of China? The the, the it's czar not of China? King, is it? What is it? The, is Chairman Mao still there? Is he still Chairman? Up someone? Some? Chairman? Someone else? Probably the yeah. new chairman. Or chairwoman? Don't be sexist. <laughs> and uh, actually, you know, when I said there's uh, um, a billion people in China, so there's hundred million little gay Chinese fellas. Yeah. Someone phoned up to say half of them are women. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. Straight on the phone with that. Well, I meant, I meant li little lesbian fellas or little gay fellas. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't being sexist. <laughs> but if I'm I was just saying there's probably a hundred million little gay Chinese people. What worries me, Rick, is if I was the premier of China, or if it was some of the people I went to school with. Is it with, premier? Oh, whoever he is, the king of China. <laughs> I was the king of China, <laughs> right? Um, isn't he the king of China and king and I? Or is that, he's somewhere else, isn't he? That's Siam, isn't it? I don't know. Is that, not, <laughs> is that not in China? <laughs> we're not, we're Where's not. Where's Siam then? We're not, it's Ceylon now, isn't it? I don't know! I don't know, or is that? Oh my God! Someone educated listening must be tearing their hair yeah, out, listening to three buffoons but listen, in a room. If I was the king of China, let's assume he's the king of China. Okay, yeah, you'd um, be tall. But you know when you sometimes you've had a few drinks, whatever. You know, I mean, I'm sure you've done that thing where you order a pizza for someone, you know, a mate or whatever, or send a taxi around to their house, something like that. Yeah. What I do is I just phone up George W. Bush 
and go, seriously, mate, you better send some stuff over money and that and videos. Because yeah. seriously, they're all outside now. One, two. Yeah. You know, and you can freak them out. Send me some knives and forks, because yeah. I am fed up with these sticks. Yes. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I don't know why we're still sticking with them. I can't, I can't pick up the tiniest little bit of chicken. It's crazy. It's rubbish. It's send us some cutlery. I'm having a nightmare eating yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. This is a uh, 104.9 Racist FM. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeremy Louis. Did yeah. you be apologised for that? Not at all, no. It's right, isn't it? Stand by it, yes. That was his follow up to You'll Always Find Me in the Kitchen at Parties. Yeah. With my favourite lyrics. She was into French cuisine, but I ain't no cordon bleu. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, looking forward to playing that in the new year. What happened to B.A. Robertson? Don't he know. knocked it off. I was standing in the corner and the ball came across. What was the other one he did? I don't know. I don't know. We're not as old as you. Oh no. And this oh, is all gobbledygook to us. <laughs> Except then, 104.9, that's yeah. Jonah Louie. Yeah, you're not listening to classic gold. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly. I've still got my own teeth. I, right. uh, I think, Rick, I was the subject of a, uh, Christmas con in the week. What, you mean, you, you bought something for four pounds, then sort of for four pound, <laughs> three pounds ninety as you walked out? That would make me livid. Because I've seen you oh, really livid. I'm absolutely furious. When I bought my PlayStation, I saw I could get it for a fiver cheaper down the road. I was absolutely And fuming. you'd already walked to about nineteen places, oh, God, I remember. Yeah. But I actually but, left you after about an hour. Yeah. Can no, I do, I'm furious because I gotta get a bargain. I, I hate think, the feeling that I'm being ripped off. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I'm loving online shopping. Oh, the savings I'm making, Rick. Really? It's crazy. Really? Getting 15, 20 quid off some things. Is it really? Oh, amazing. But the, these things, can I might point out, are like Jaguars and, uh, mm. you know, <laughs> yeah, Mitsubishi cars. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but it's no, worth shopping round. No, this was not such a con. This, well, it was a con, but it wasn't so much one of those just a missed bargain. Yeah. Um, doorbell rings, answer it. It's a couple of girls. They must have been 13 or 14, maybe? Now, I've always had a problem with teenagers. I'm intimidated by teenagers. In it, case they call you a dork or something. Well, I mean, I told you before, I was walking down the street once, and, uh, there's two guys coming towards me. I mean, real losers. Do you know what I mean? Glasses, the spots, greasy hair. Do you know, really pathetic. And I was sniggering to myself, I was thinking, look at those losers. And as I passed them, I heard one of them look at me and say to his mate, look at that geek. <laughs> <laughs> I was furious. I was thinking, I would like to call you a nerdlinger, but gee, they expect it back. I was really furious and, like, upset. And so, as I say, these teen teenagers are at the door, and they were quite aggressive two aggressive, quite aggressive girls, and they had a piece of A4 paper and they went, we're sponsors. doing, um, doing a sponsored thing. Yeah. But I don't, I didn't quite catch what it was they were doing that was sponsored. I think they, they sort of fudged it when we're doing a sponsor. Oh, yeah. And I went, right. And they went, uh, do you want to sponsor us? Boy, they picked on the wrong person. Uh, well, I, and I sort of, <laughs> I was a bit intimate. I didn't want, I didn't know, I don't know why I said no. I was worried maybe it was part of some kind of, you know, hidden camera <laughs> show, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so I said, yeah, alright, I'll sponsor you. So they handed me this form, and I think, I always thought you were supposed to have quite an official looking form for any sponsorship thing. But this was literally a piece of A4 torn out of a notepad. <laughs> it was the back of a Gareth Gates poster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> With some blue tag on it. Yeah, well, and, they said, and I looked at it, and I didn't really absorb it, but it, it had things like, you know, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Smith. You yeah. know, five quid. Yeah. And then no one's actual address, just Finchley Road, you know, duh, 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 nothing too specific. Yeah. So I wrote my name on, and, um, put down three quid. Cause a lot of people were giving them fivers, but I thought, you know, I'm not made of money, it's Christmas. <laughs> I got my gifts and stuff. <laughs> so I gave, gave them a fiver and asked for change. Yeah, yeah. well, I gave, I gave them three quid. I said, I'll, I'll get sponsor you for three quid. Best of luck. And they went, can we have the money? And I said, well, aren't you supposed to do the thing? She, and they, and the woman just looked, the girl just looked at me, she just went, no. <laughs> so I gave her three quid. But what difference does it make? <laughs> well, I'm assuming though that it's not going to any charity. But it's they, no sponsor. But I know. But then I'm not being funny. The, the the charity that it's not going to, you wouldn't have given to it anyway. <laughs> it's true enough. So all that's happened is you're three quid but down. But I'm three quid down. Yeah, but if it would have gone to charity, you'd be three quid down. The fact that it hasn't gone to charity doesn't matter because you wouldn't have given it to charity. Yeah, but so... if it had gone to charity, Rick, I'd have felt a little bit superior, a little bit smug. That'd have kept me going for another six months. Whereas now it's just gone to a couple of weeks off the street, you know, who are scamming people. Possibly old people, Rick, and that's who I feel sorry for. They've not got a great deal of money. That's why I'm not worried about myself. I've got a bit of cash. What about the old people? Yeah. You Although know? you are three quid down, which probably still hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> it's still stinging. That's why I just like to tell you now, get off the chest. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's Merry Christmas. Thing. Yeah. Just be but careful uh, what- If you're living up in North London, be careful. There's two girls that are going around. I expect, you know, they might come to your door. But they might be-, wary. be Genuine? No, I don't think so. No? They were common. They were very common. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Was it, was, was the giveaway things like, you know, Santa Claus had given ten pounds, <laughs> exactly. Tony Blair had given a quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I think, I think you were conned, mate. Yeah. Right. 
Oh. Won't get fooled again by the Who. Ian, I'm gonna ask your expert opinion. Is that not one of the greatest rock songs of all time? Yeah, if you'd have played the proper version of it. I know, but it's six and a half minutes, and we usually do, but we just thought, you know, it's Christmas, people wanna, you know, have uh, him and more Jonah Louie. Yeah, but we could have, we could have played like the full eight minutes rather than making the show sound like strolling round to your local Asda with the Christmas songs with a little that bit more racism. That to me sounds like in. fighting talk. You want a rock challenge, Canfield. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock this out the last 40 can minutes. Can we put, can we put Keith Moon in, in the, uh, monologue? I was gonna ask you, he's my favourite drummer of all time, will yeah. you go along with that? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So we got, oh, we got, we got Lemmy and Keith Moon. Yeah. Are we making yeah. up a kind of super rock band here? Oh, we could like do. That. We could make no, it a super that, that's, band. that's far too passe. You call it the monolith rock, it sounds more stupid. Okay, okay. um, so we got Lemmy and Moon. Yeah. We just, we need three more. So we need two no, more, two more on the and over. then one to stand astride it, like the metal angel of death. <laughs> now, uh, Ian, you've, cause you've, you've, you've hung out with some of the big rock names, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere with this, I was just, I'm intrigued. Tell me some of the people you've, you've hung out with. You've hung out with Maiden, have you? I've hung out with Maiden. Maiden, don't you? I've, I've been, fly, I've been flying with Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you, I mean- It only took us three attempts to land at Gatwick a few weeks ago. But I don't know much really? about you, uh, Ian, are you, are you, are you someone who lives the rock and roll excess lifestyle? Are you kind of drink and drugs, is that your thing? I like to be kind of, you know, on the edge, having a look at what's going on inside. Right, I don't quite know what that means. Well, yeah, I'd It's like... the way they talk, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, because I mean, some of those rockers, they're hard living boys. Can you keep up with them? Do you, you know, are you up till four in the morning? Oh, morning? four in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> Four, four in which morning? Hey, daddy oh man. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going out about four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Carl reckons the gays go out late. Yeah. <laughs> well, he he played, his his favourite song is The Killing of Georgie, right? <laughs> right. And he went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been, you know, going out a bit earlier? <laughs> yeah, well, no, fair point. <laughs> yeah. Is that song time specific then? Uh, no, no, but he reckons he probably got, because uh, he was out late. Oh, <laughs> he, right, okay. uh, as, uh, he said, there's one that works here, sometimes he doesn't go out till midnight. <laughs> but, you know, I imagine you a little bit like that, uh, little boy in the film Almost Famous, when you're on tour with the rock legends. Do you know what I mean? You're like, you know, the little kid there, you, maybe the doors are being closed in your face, are they, as they go berserk? Yeah, well, 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 yeah when, I, when I started, yeah, okay, yeah, but, yeah. but now, you know, I insist I, I see you as one of theirs. Yeah, yeah, access all areas, laminate, you know, I mean, I can enter mm -hmm. venues now with a big bottle of Jack Daniels, I don't get stopped. Yeah, 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 yeah. And really? What, and, but seriously, have you, without naming names, obviously, what, uh, excess have you seen? Have you witnessed anything? Or have people calmed down now? Is it, are they, are these rockers clean living now? <sighs> Depends who you're talking about. Sure. Yeah. Is there anything going on like the days of, uh, you know, Ozzy and, and, uh, Motley Crue? I haven't seen, uh, well, I haven't seen any Red Snappers, like with, uh, with Jimmy Page. Do you know that story of mine? No. I can't talk about the, it. The, so that's, 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 I forget about that, yeah. Oh, was it, is it disgusting? Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, is it worse than talking about B-Days and Ricky's Farts? Mm -hmm. Kind of. Right, okay. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, I know. You wouldn't want the instruction manual as to what happened with the Red Snapper, like right. you do with the B-Day. Sure, sure, sure. Oh. Um... God. But don't, 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 as I say, don't name names. Obviously, you know, there's a sort of client, you know, doctor confidentiality or whatever that you Yeah, well, I saw, I, I saw... We know there's no one listening. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It won't go further than this studio. Yeah. I, 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 saw, I saw a member of, uh, a very big band, um, play the Astoria, uh, recently, and they turned up at the Astoria about 15 minutes before they were going on stage, right? right. And, uh, someone said to them, is it good to be playing the Astoria? To which he turned around and went, uh, oh, right, are we in London? Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And th this person then... <laughs> well, it wasn't play... Daniel O'Donnell, was it? <laughs> I can't, I, uh, I can't even think of the Libertines. No, that's not a very big... Huge no. band, is it? No. 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 Bigger than that. Bigger yeah, than okay. That. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, what other rock and roll access do you, do you want? Oh, I was told once that if you stay up for two days, the best thing to do is eat some yogurt. This is just like we're going to having tips now. Sure. Yeah, you know. So if you're, that's apparently the best thing at the end of the excess, you need some yogurt. So always right. keep some in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and chopsticks are no good. No, no chopsticks are no Yeah, so, so don't, whatever you do, don't go on a bender in China, because otherwise you'll be screwed, right? No, there's no benders in China. Mm. <laughs> oh, there are, there's about 100 million. Yeah. Right. 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 Another tune that I enjoyed this year, Rick. I don't know what your thoughts are on it. I'm fascinated yeah. to find out. Loving it. Loving it. Jay Z and Farrell and, uh, Frontin. What do you think, uh, Canfield? Darkness number one? Yeah, well, they cheated, didn't they? Because they went and did their signing mm. at HMV, uh, yesterday, so they get in like an hour of extra, extra sales. Why is that cheating, though? Well, you know, I don't know. Well, I suppose Gary Jules could have turned up at Virgin down the road, couldn't he? And, and yeah, you know. Okay, think, well then, in that I case, they're that going. Deserves to be sort of number one because at least it's it, it's potentially 
a sort of evergreen sort of Slade type classic and they are the biggest sort of band around at the moment. Careful, what are your thoughts? You love rock. What do you make of the darkness? It's all right. Been around for a while now. Sure. You know, another year, maybe. But they're, they're all the, the ingredients of everything you like, almost. They've got a bit of glam, they've got a bit of Queen, they've got a bit of ACDC. It's all in there. You've got a bit of Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's funny. It's, uh, 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 they're a good fan band, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, right. they're essentially just too close to novelty. But then so was Slade, in a way. Slade have only got this, this credibility resurgence in retrospect. At the time, they were a pop band that was essentially were for teenagers and thugs. I'm yeah. not sure Canfield's gonna be championing Slade, though, up there in the same way that he champions the Maiden. But you gotta, you gotta <laughs> appreciate what, what Hold has done, surely. Yeah, I appreciate what Hold has done. But they, but they only became cool, didn't they, when Oasis covered them? Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I genuinely always liked Slade and I've still got a soft spot for him. But, yeah. um, yeah, the darkness, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. At least the darkness one is irresponsible for the kids of today, though, because the amount of spelling mistakes that Slade were responsible for at school in the 70s was atrocious. Putting the Z's, oh. putting the Z's in. Rubbish. Um, Ian, I'm gonna have to ask you for our third pillar of rock before the ad break. Right, what well, we need, um, have we got so we've got- We've got Lemmy yeah. and Moon. Right, okay. I think we need to put in, uh, we need a guitarist in there, we should maybe put in Keith Richards. I'm a little bit worried about the health scare, cause the kind of air pollution around any venue that this band might play, mm -hmm. with like Lemmy and, and, and Keith Richards there, yeah, you know. See, I'm, I'm, up. I'm surprised at Keith Richards, cause I wouldn't have thought it was heavy enough for you, but the Stones have done enough to get in the, the annals of rock. Yeah. Okay, let's play some ads. Quick question. <laughs> Do you actually speak like this, Ian? What? This, this, is this is your real this voice. This is real voice, yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do your, do your, um, uh, daytime sort of voice, the X-list voice. Say, say it's fast, it's just coming up to 20 past 2 on XFM 104.9. Um, after the break, um, w uh, we've got Feeder. Say that. It's just coming up to 20 past 2 on XFM 104.9. These are the ads. <laughs> <laughs> That song is. Uh, don't know about that. It could sound like he's saying something to do with bell ends. Well, yeah. W what? Heaven forbid. What you think he meant that? Did he? Probably. No. Uh, that's the darkness on uh, XFM 104.9. Bell end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what other rude words are there? Cock. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that is rude. Yeah. Um, especially now, at, especially at Christmas. Especially at Christmas. <laughs> it's yeah. It's time for families. Oh no. Now listen. Time for family. Gone. Now, Ian. Yeah. Who is your fourth? We need a lead singer in this mega group, the monoliths of rock. Uh, who we got? Lemmy. We've got, we got, we got, we got Keith Richards on guitar. We've got Lemmy on bass. Yeah. We've got Keith Moon on skins. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Some terminology coming out there. Yeah. Yeah. Who's doing the Vox? Uh, Who's given Golden Tonsils Award? Uh, Robert Plant. He's gone for Plant. He's yeah. gone for Plant. A lot of track there, names there. There is the group. The lineup is Mo Moon, uh, Lemmy, Richard, Plant. Okay. Now, our competition, Steve. Name that, name that group. Okay. What's the best, the best, heaviest rock name ever? Sure. <laughs> this is, this <laughs> is obviously not a name that already exists. No. Okay. Um, my Anything mate of mine came up with, I think it was, um, a Brain Hammer. <laughs> which, no, which right. I like. Um, yeah. Velvet Nazi 666. <laughs> sure. So we want the heaviest, yeah. most mental piece of death metal, head banging, bleeding out of your brains rock axe attack. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Christ on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome to the stage. Oh, look at you. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. That would freak out the metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, cheeky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now listen. They need a manager. They need someone who could introduce them. They need someone to stand astride them. Who is the leader now? Who is the king of all that rocks? Well, it's obviously Tommy Vance, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what worries me, Rick? I, we've said Vance a lot today. I'm wondering, people, the kids today, do they know Tommy Vance? Are they what do you think Ian? If they don't know, they shouldn't be listening. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So, Vance is their manager. He needs to, they're on at Wembley. He's got them on at Wembley. They're, they've got a, they're, they're the greatest rock band of all time. We need the name. Please, please welcome to the stage. What are they called? We'll Phone uh, in, email in, 
Um, and the prize, we'll get some, we'll rummage through the bins as get Carl some, get does. some old tap like Carl does, some VHSs and CDs, <laughs> greatest air guitar Peter ever. Max. Yeah. What's the, do we need to give out the numbers and Work stuff? Work an email, can't they? Don't get the phone you don't want to talk to me in, seriously. No, he's <laughs> already, you, you know, you know when, uh, what, what's his name says to Agent Starling as she's going to meet Hannibal, don't let him inside your head. Yeah. Don't talk to the listeners here. <laughs> exactly, it's very much the same Please thing. Please don't let, don't I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, concerned that my email's gonna be besieged by people sending you links to how to clean out the B-Day. Mm. Um, well that's <laughs> right. Week. But Make what's the things? most, the most mental head bleeding, banging brain hammer operation <laughs> this band can be called? Call what, in. Uh, Rick, because I've always, it always amuses me if you, I mean, I know it's cruel to put you on the spot, but so some of your former band names have always amused me. Well, the worst. The worst one? Well, I'll, I'll just Ricky leave this. Has a, Ricky's had a number of bands over the years. What was the, uh, The worst one? Uh, ready? Re get ready to play that record, because I don't want, I don't want any aftermath. No, hang on, before you tell me, what was <laughs> the one, because you keep, these pictures of you, like, when you were New Romantic, keep on being published. That was Sean and Dancing. Yeah, but someone- That's pretty bad. But so someone told me, they were like, oh, ask him about when he tried to be Bon Jovi. Can you imagine such a thing? I know, I know the name you're thinking of. Right, here we go. Play the record, immediately I say this. <laughs> ready? For Sacred Hearts. <laughs> play a record. Blair on XFM 104.9. I forget the name of that track, but it's good. Good song. Thanks very much. Oh, good song. Yeah. Oh, right. I, I just thought you were complimenting giving his opinion. Right, yeah. go on. The what? Are we still on the air? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Merry Christmas. We got someone on the line. Oh, right, right, right. He's here. Who's that? Ricky! Ricky! It's, uh, yeah, go on. It's Jonathan, how are you? Good. It's, it's, it's only TV's Jonathan Ross. Ross, turn your radio down, you idiot. I'm here. I like to, uh, I haven't got a radio what are you talking about? We can hear the feedback. Well, I haven't got it. It's not my fault. It's your incompetent radio station. And also, did you hear we said don't call him, we don't want to speak to the listeners. What's yeah, well, are you, I'm, not uh, I'm not a listener. I'm a visitor to your shores. I'm special. You know that full well. I know you're special. Right. Yeah, exactly. What have you, got, have you got a name for the band? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Blump. <laughs> <laughs> B L U M P. I tell you for what, you can't have a normal word. If it's the monolith band of all time, if it's the B, you can't have a regular word. It doesn't make sense. How can you have a regular word? All these ideas you've come up with are rubbish. You need a word which only stands for that one thing. No one's heard it before. No one will use it again. Blump. I can't help but feel that that's a more appropriate name for maybe one of Ricky's bands. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I, I love seeing that picture of him in that band you see everywhere these days. He's like, he was like a, a girl. He was like a little girl in a suit. <laughs> It's like a girl, a little dyke at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It's got to be the, ke the kettle calling the pot black, surely. Yeah, I've always got nothing but 100% heterosexual. You, we, we're not sure about it. There's not anything wrong with it, I know that, but look at you. <laughs> I had to add a bit that in, there's not anything wrong with it. I'm Jonathan Ross. Oh dear. Oh, I, was, uh, I was thinking the other day, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. In the comedy awards, yes, sir. you didn't have to say some awful things about poor, poor celebrities, poor has been celebrities with coke addictions and and yeah, fat lips and faces that have been, that uh, where surgery's gone wrong and uh, everything. You, you, and they're, when they're on the show, they're going, oh, you yeah. look lovely. Yeah, oh, I'm you're nice so them. Good. Well, I'm nice to them to their face, but obviously when I'm not with them, I like to let my true feelings be known. <laughs> Is that, is what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what, you can get anything off your chest you want on this show. Any celebrities you want to talk about? There's no one listening. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, just there's between a lot of people, me and you. People listening. A lot of people listen. They listen to my show, and after they've had a few hours of, you know, good laughs, they like something bland to just call them down afterwards. So they flip over. We know this happens. Did you, uh, um, did you mention my, um, DVD on your radio show? You know what? Tonight? I forgot to. I forgot oh, to mention it. Christ! I forgot to mention it. I meant to mention it by the office, but I forgot to mention it. And then I thought afterwards, it's not like he needs the cash, is it? You know, it's, <laughs> not, like, it's not like he needs it. It's not like he's, but he's probably earned more money in a short space. You're like a lottery winner and you've got about as much taste. You're like one of those burglars who's won the lottery. <laughs> I am. I'm just <laughs> like an Albanian like like window cleaner at the moment. A burglar from Reading who won the lottery and now what's he, he's fritting it away on what? On I do feel sorry lovely. for my neighbours. I've moved into a, you know, really nice place. Now, it, I feel like it's the hillbillies. <laughs> no, it's nice he's moved in though because it's nice. He's given them something to sort of talk about behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> you right. united the whole block. Right, go, go and play with some Japanese wind-up toys now. I'm guys. going home to play, uh, Mario Double Dash with my son. It's gonna be a good afternoon. I, uh, phoned you once after I finished my show. It's about five minutes past three. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I don't mind if you, you know, I said, you, uh, I said, Aiden, and you went, it's brilliant. You said, you said, this is what you said, you went, Everyone's out. Jane's taking the kids out. I've already masturbated twice, and I'm playing with a new Japanese toy. I'm uh, I'm masturbating now. <laughs> <laughs> My record.
Uh, yeah, Kings of Leon, Wasted Time on XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was sidetracked there, well, but just uh, some of the band names. And now, in. now listen, I wanna put in two of my own, I wanna win that pile of tat, <laughs> tat out there, right? I've got two names here, okay? Would you just remind people in case they've just tuned in? Oh yeah, Ian Canfield has chosen his, uh, a mega band of all time. He's got Keith Moon on drums, he's got Lemmy on bass, he's got Keith Richard on guitar, he's got, um, who have you got singing? Robert Plant. A Robert Plant, and their manager is Vance. <laughs> And he's, but he needs to announce them at Wembley Arena. They're already sold out. They're at number one in the album charts. <laughs> They're the greatest rock band of all time. And I, I've got two suggestions. Okay. What about this? Please welcome to the stage. Tungsten Lung Hemorrhage. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please oh. welcome to the stage. God Dildo. God Dildo, interesting. Nice juxtaposition there of God, <laughs> the almighty creator, and a dildo. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> nice yeah. use of uh, <laughs> some contrasting imagery there. Yeah. yeah. Powerful and topical. Tungsten lung hemorrhage. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a couple also on the email, um, people didn't really include their names, but who cares. Um, please welcome to the stage, Balls of Steel. Ball, balls of Steel, yeah. yeah. And we've, we've had like, Brain Hammer. Yeah. Brain Hammer's good, Lots I like Brain, brain related Hammer. related stuff. Quite <laughs> like in the idea of tumour fish. Tuma fish, tuma I like. Tuma fish is very good. I like tuma fish. I just wonder if there's one more contender. I don't know who this was in that phoned in with it, but possibly it's topical. <laughs> Deathly Hem. Yeah. Deathly Hem. It's brilliant. Oh, it's Deathly Hem. Please welcome to the stage. Deathly it's Hem. It's Deathly Hem. Who's that? We've got to give it to I don't know who that was. Oh, but, uh, well, if you came up with Deathly Hem, email again. Deathly Hem. It's the greatest name for the greatest rock <laughs> band of all time. Will you please welcome to the stage? Deathly Hem. <laughs> It's golden tonsils. <laughs> Isn't it? I went to, uh, I was gonna go see him once at the Cameron Lander World about, uh, a year ago, and they had this sign up, right, <laughs> saying that Graham Bonnet, who sang that song, had cancelled, right, and it said, God willing, he'll be performing tomorrow. And just in case you thought he cancelled because maybe no one bought any tickets, the doctor's certificate was released <laughs> to cancellation <laughs> Brilliant. Rude. Well, we sang that a couple of times drunk, haven't we, Ian? Yeah, but, At the yeah, top of our voice. We have done it. It is the best. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Ben won, Ben has won whatever you're giving away. Yeah, Ben a big came up with Death, Death Hem. Yeah, Deathly Hem. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, if you are in a rock band and you're looking for a name and you think you deserve that name, then, you know, write, write to us. It, we want to know that you're really heavy and we, and A and Canfer would officially hand over the deeds of the name Bethlehem. Deathlyhem? Deathlyhem, yeah. 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 Deathlyhem. They only play at Christmas, you only play like big venues at Christmas and it's all things about like fighting, like good versus evil and yeah. God versus the devil. And it's, you gotta write songs like that, yeah. Yeah. Deathlyhem on XFM 104.9. Perhaps oh. that the debut should certainly be a concept album based on yeah. the nativity play. Yeah, Brilliant. Nativity, Brilliant. Nativity, Brilliant. yeah, that'd well, be just good. the whole kind of Old Testament in kind of rock form. Yeah, <laughs> with like, it'd be extraordinary. It, 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 it's the battle for humanity. Yeah, it's called um, humanity manity, and it's a fight <laughs> in the ocean of hell. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'd like to see a serpent, maybe pictured that somewhere. That'd be a serpent, isn't it? Track four. Yeah. Track four. Track <laughs> four. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think we should give massive props and suitable regards to Ian Canfield, he's come and he's pressed the buttons. He's, he stood in for an idiot, brilliantly. <laughs> yeah, he has so. stood in for, uh, <laughs> the retarded It's a shame role. that he's not, you've not displayed some of the usual incompetence that we've come to love and expect from Carl. It's a shame. Okay, well, okay, you well, it's a You are the greatest DJ in the world, though. The way you sort of, like, drop press these- buttons. It, it, but, you know. Every yeah, time I press the button off air, Ricky's been going, oh, what great DJ. It is great, mm. you know, so he ends it, he's just, no, it's just brilliant. I mean, we're lucky if we can talk with the mic on. Is that the title? Not talk over record. Oh, we did, okay. Today we did some great links during the ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, Jonathan Ross, uh, masturbating. Live. <laughs> On air. Just, just looking back at some of the highlights. You don't get that on Capital Gold, do you? <laughs> <laughs> like Tony Blackburn getting a call from Fluff Freeman going, "All right, mate, I'm knocking one out." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, have a lovely Christmas. Have a bloody great Christmas. Man. Have a bloody great Christmas. It's the best of next week. Yep. Um, the best of the last few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> with some tat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Carl's put together. We're Look back in January. We're playing some of our favourite songs of the year. I'm looking week. forward to seeing, um, Pilker's Tan. Pilker's and pictures from his holiday. Covered in ash from the beach. <laughs> yeah. And we're back on the, uh, third.
I believe. But Ian, do you want to introduce one? This is this is Ian's choice for the day. Yeah. Um, we'll see you uh, next week in spirit, and then uh, we're back on the third with uh, Pilkers. Over to you, Camp. Yeah, enough of Sharon of the Week. This is Paul Diano, ex of Iron Maiden, doing uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. There's the record before us, and here we are pre recorded because we did this a few weeks ago because we're not here at the moment, are we? We're away in that. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. Well, He's not actually with us. He, no. He's on the. He'll be in some of the uh, best of clips that will be coming up. Shortly. Yeah, this is just us, isn't it? This is just us. We did this. When did we do this, Rick? A couple of weeks back. Hold on. What is it? What it's day the twenty-seventh it? today. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed well, Christmas. I loved Christmas. I loved Christmas. I had I a great Christmas. time. What did you get? Uh, oh, loads of presents. So and I'm glad they made it to number one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad. Stroke. He. She. Yeah. I'm really glad that the pop idols, Cliff Richard, Westlife, made it to number one. Bo Selector. Social lector. Yeah, just delete that as, uh, yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna play some of the best of, some of the, the greatest moments of the last three weeks. <laughs> yeah. I ever heard on XFM 104.9. What about this? Do you remember this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one is it? <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Over there, Carl Pilkington. The man who believes anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a condition due to his little round head. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, it might be a new condition that uh, we can call cranial sferity. <laughs> and it, cause it's, it presses on his lobes and the only sort of upshot of that is, he's normal in every way but he believes everything he reads <laughs> or yeah. sees on Ananova. Mm. Mm. Alright? Talking of which, Rick, I don't really follow the news. No. It's mainly boring, isn't it? Wars and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know Well, yeah. Well it is a war, it's just, it's all this nonsense before and after. When it's a war, it's, you know, it's in the middle of the war, you can watch it on telly. True. You get results, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a test match or something. But it's all this rubbish before and after, it drags this, on. This recent war seemed, I thought, just generally it was better presented than the previous one. Because I remember the, well, golf, the first Gulf War, it was, it was often during the night and I wasn't, couldn't stay up. Yeah, because know. I think the American had rights to it, like the Tyson fight, so we, yeah. had, to, we had to get it at two in the morning. Exactly. Which is annoying, they had, you know, their prime time in that. Yeah. And yeah, a lot yeah. of it was in black and white, it was when the bombs went in. with the bombs going in. So, uh, this no, time the, there seemed to be a lot more colourful yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 it's much better coverage. I think there's been awards. Yeah, well I like For it, so, like Channel 4 won for cricket. Yeah, I mean a few times as well I was quite pleased to see See, you know, they actually had footage of the bombs exploding. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 No, good, well done. Generally, you know, good on you. Yeah. Well done. Good um, on you. Yeah, I don't know it costs you, a lot though, doesn't it? It isn't a cost. Wars thing. a lot more when you got something like you know uh, a Jimmy Carr game show, which probably costs about underground. Yeah, like half an hour of war costs oh, no. millions. It's almost man. as expensive as like Terminator Three or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know. But, but then you know you got you got a variety. Exactly. Sorry, Steve, you're talking, mate. <laughs> well, no, I just. Uh, just wanted, I just wanted to make sure you're aware that the, um, the World Elephant Polo Championships have taken place. I did get it. You're I aware think of that. On, yeah, yeah, we won, didn't we? England won. Yeah. Well, I, my question is, where have they been practicing? I don't know. I, I, do you remember ever at school anyone ever saying to you, are you interested in playing, uh, polo? Do you, reckon it was, it was, do you reckon it was five blokes in pith helmets kept sneaking into a whip's nade? <laughs> what are you doing, lads? We're practicing. Get, get down. Yeah. Get off them elephants. Yeah. I genuinely, I don't, I didn't even know we had a team. I elephant, can't believe it. No, but I, it's like Johnny Wilkinson and the rugby lads, they're gonna get MBEs, all sorts. The elephant boys, the elephant polo boys, nothing. They're gonna get nothing. I haven't seen the but, sun you know, to, be, like to be fair, it's not like horse polo where I think, I don't think you, there's a stick long enough. I think the elephants kick it, don't they? I think you might be right. I think they're not allowed to use their tusks. They'd burst it, weren't they? Mm, I think they They go, yeah. oh! <laughs> Start again. Raheem! Yeah. What do you mean the elephants kick it? Alright, I've got, I've opened a can of worms here. Uh, you know, um, um, normal polo on a horse, they have like, um, yeah, they whack them up. Yeah, they whack them, right? But I think it's, obviously they're too high up. I think, I, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they just train the elephant to kick it. So, so like, why are people something about? Why not just let them have a kick about without? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that! And why does horse racing have to have a jockey? Well, they just let the horses go. Oh, yeah, okay, lads, on your no cheating. <laughs> on your marks, get set, go. You don't get back here. Get back here. Brilliant. Yeah. Play record. Right, Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. His version of Wonder Wolf. You've not heard it yet. You'll be loving it. You'll be loving this. This is the best off show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Yes.
I hope you're enjoying the best of. <laughs> There's a fella who, um, was in a coma for twenty years. Hmm. Just, they, they kept, like, taking him to, through, like, the normal day, they took him to Alton Towers and stuff. <laughs> he doesn't know any, anything about it, just kept going through the motions. Um, don't know if they kept charging him. Um, <laughs> kept putting him through all that. He eventually came out of it. Twenty years. And went, stop taking me to Alton Towers, <laughs> it's shit! <laughs> I just thought, imagine and how much post making, he had. Eh? How much post? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did gosh. you read about that guy in the paper, Carl? He, um, <clears throat> sorry, on the internet. Uh, <laughs> he, he in about I think it was about 1984, 85. He had a terrible car accident. But this went, must be it. He this went into a coma. This is must be what he's talking about. Well, they didn't take him to Alton. Of course they didn't. But you've got to try and decipher the truth from the conjecture, from the thing that he, he I mean, don't forget, Carl says, uh, realises that he's had a dream. He talks to Suzanne and goes, that was good, wasn't it, last night we were in the plane? She goes, no, that's a dream. He goes, oh yeah, where's my car left? <laughs> you got to, you know, I mean, I can now decipher what he's actually seen, what he's read. Well, go on, what, what, what did you- Well, I'm assuming it's the same guy. <laughs> it is the same guy. In, uh, it was a guy in, uh, some small American town, yeah. and he'd had a car crash and he'd gone into a coma and his, uh, wife had, uh, left him. She'd gone on with her life because he'd been in a coma since then. And he had just woken up recently. Marriage wasn't working. <laughs> Marriage wasn't working. Uh, he just wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he actually had, she was pregnant at the time, and so now his daughter, his now, his daughter is basically the same age as he was when he went into the coma. And, um, oh. he's just started coming around, he's just started making jokes. He says, they said, uh, how do you feel? He said horny, which I thought was quite witty for a man who'd been in a coma for, uh, for many years. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he's slowly trying to rebuild, uh, what life he can, he can. That's what interesting. do you make of that though? Because <laughs> the thing is that, He's missed. Imagine what he's missed, Carl. Imagine the music that he's missed. The Live TV Aid. Programs, missed Live news. Aid. <laughs> Live Aid. He's missed, he missed uh, the Phil Spice Collins Girls. playing in two consonants in one day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, oh, frankly, I'd be devastated if I just missed that. Missed happened. Bross. Yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't, so he put on ripped jeans and they go, passe. They just have to send him a series of those, uh, <laughs> I love 1986 exactly. programs with Kate Thornton filling him in on what he's Exactly. Missed. Peter Kay reminding him of Space Hoppers. Yeah, he Richard remembers Bell those. Talking rubbish. Yeah. So, um, so, extraordinary though, isn't it, Carl, to think? Mm. No, obviously. So, uh, had he aged much? Because he hadn't had any problems or anything, no worries. Well, well he, he probably wouldn't, he probably wouldn't have, physiologically, he probably wouldn't have the wear and tear of a 43 year old oh. man. Because he wouldn't have sun, he wouldn't have had sort of nicotine, beer. Um, and they were just feeding that to him. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> still. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you feel groggy though, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you might feel a bit groggy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's not, he's not fully back to normal. I mean, there's no, some kind of residual brain damage. Yeah. But nevertheless, he can form sentences. He's got very, he's got no real memory, so he can't remember a lot of things. It was just when I saw Carl, that, have that's you been in Out of time on XFM 104.9. One of my favourite singles of the year, and that's another thing, we'll be playing our favourite singles of the year, as well as our favourite clips of our own show. Rick, I imagine if people have got a bit of Christmas money, they're wondering what they can spend it on. Office DVD. Well, other than that, these guys have got some ideas. What, adverts? Uh, brilliant. XFM. <laughs> Placebo, bitter end, on XFM 104.9. This is pre-recorded, we recorded this a couple of weeks ago before Christmas. I hope you had a great Christmas. Uh, if you didn't, it's not our fault really, is it? Nothing to do with us. We would have thought we'd have. We had a wear of a time because we've got plenty of cash now. <sighs> thanks to a lot of you who probably bought the uh, Office DVD. Yeah. Probably got and if you haven't yet, in. and you've maybe got vouchers or money, still available. Still there in the shop. Still available. You can still make it the best selling DVD of all time. Please. Please, please do. Yeah. Please do. I'll tell you what you want to here then, before you make your mind up. I'll tell you what, if you like this next clip, go and buy the Office DVD, I think you wrote it's a brilliant clip. It's the one where we talk about, uh, well, it is self-explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best job you've ever had still, Carl? Talk like about it. Is it is still- Paper your, round. Is it still the paper round? <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> no, it was good though. If you look at it, like, you know, what I liked about it, you're your own boss. No, you're not. You're not your own boss. <laughs> no, the, the guy who the agents agent. is your boss. All right. But then when, once you get out and you've got your papers and that, you, you sort of, you're on your so own. So you want you as long as you deliver the papers exactly to the places he said you are in the time he said? Yeah. It's I a do. freedom, isn't it? <laughs> Any jobs you wouldn't do? Uh I've just thought of one that you wouldn't do. Go on. With your sort of mild homophobia. 
Well, I'm not. Proctologist. What's that? Basically sticking your finger at other people's arses. Right, well, no, I wouldn't do that, no. Why have you got to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, why have you got to do well, that? Why does anyone need that doing? Does they got to look if they've got an arse ache or something? Which trainee doctor makes that their speciality? <laughs> do you know what I mean? That must be, um, right, we got our place for horses and it's, it's you, Meadows. You, you yeah. came last. Oh, seriously, what? I'm not the arse doctor, am I? Yeah. You came last. Oh, I'm a bum, a bum GP. I can't yeah, believe it. Yeah, yeah. You got to, oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. I'll tell you the job I don't like. What? I wouldn't want to be doing. The, the woman, there's a little woman who sits in the little <laughs> snack stall on Finchley Road. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how to describe it really. She is surrounded by snacks. She can't move for snacks. It's like, look like American it, Beauty, but with with uh, different. Not dissimilar to that. Yeah. It's a little hut on the station, <laughs> yeah. and it's like if you go to the seaside, you can put your head through one of those cardboard cutouts, and it looks like you're a big fat person, whatever, and you yeah. can have your photo taken. It's like an equivalent of that, but it's just snacks everywhere. She's got bananas up to her chin. <laughs> She's got chocolate <laughs> coming down to her eyes, crisps either side of her. She can't move. She can't do 360 degrees. She's like packed in there. I don't think, I don't know how she gets in there. I think morning. they put her in her first and they put, okay, pour in the bananas. Yeah. They go, and then they go, go pour in the nuts. She has and two hours of makeup before yeah, they open. Exactly, yeah. Dressing her in there. Because I'll ask for something from the fridge and she cannot turn her head to see. She has to go by feel alone just to feel the fridge <laughs> and get stuff out and pass it. And often I'll say that's not what I wanted, but she can. You gotta let her off. It's oh, extraordinary. Dear. But there's no music playing. Does she has to sell her way out of it. <laughs> exactly. If, 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 if it's a slow day, she's stuck yeah. there till the next day. Yeah, it's like a world breaking attempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carl, what job wouldn't you want to do? Well, any job. You're a lazy. You're girl. joking, aren't you? What? I've done loads of stuff. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy now doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You but, look uh, happy. I think I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, calm down. You on drugs? I'm all right. Are I you on E? I'm happy for him. I'm happy for them. Yeah, go on. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for them. Yeah, I'm happy in that. Yeah. What do you mean happy for them? We are England. Happy yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't play. I did very little towards it. No. It was mainly Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, I barely ever contributed. <laughs> Switching on the TV was about as much as I did. <laughs> exactly. And shouting, come on! Yeah. <laughs> Talking about jobs and that, though, I was reading the other day about, um, like, you know, rubbish jobs that people have had and stuff. I haven't got time when I work, man. <laughs> just, I just get on with it. I'm yeah. not squiddly diddly. <laughs> Fingers in pies, different jobs. Go on. Uh, do you know Ivan the Terrible? Ivan. He, uh... It's, yeah, his Russian guy. Yeah, that was the Welsh fella. Who yeah. was, who was bloody awful, <laughs> but not as bad as his Russian cousin. Ivan, yeah. go on. He, uh, he had a fella doing some work for him, right? <laughs> this fella built his house. Uh, after it was done, right, yeah. uh, the terrible fellow was like, uh, <laughs> I fell at Ivan. He, he yeah. was going, oh, it's brilliant, you've, you've done a good job there. Yeah. I don't want you to build another one like that. Took his eyes out. Just what? stopped him making an house like that. Yeah. Blimey. That's why bad, isn't it? Why didn't he take away his trowel? Then he could have <laughs> seen, yeah. but he couldn't have built a house without, without a trowel. He can't build a house without a trowel. Yeah. I, we, I suppose yeah. he, I, I suppose he probably later thought that once he'd been nicknamed Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, yeah. He Go, thought, why? Why? Because he gouged people's eyes out. Yeah, but I didn't want to build another house. I know, but take his trowel away. What would I have been then? Well, <laughs> Ivan the Crafty. At most. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ivan the Jealous. You know, Ivan yeah. the Spoiled Brat. But yeah. Ivan, uh, Ivan gouged someone's eyes. Out. That is bloody terrible. I'm surprised you're not called Ivan the. C Do you know what I yeah. mean? You're going to get on history like with Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. He's mainly remembered for impaling people. Yeah. He did a lot of other stuff. He did a load of great charity but work he did. The impaling is the thing that's really yeah. gone down in history. <laughs> when were you reading about Ivan the Terrible? No, it's just Or the Ivan the Terrible <laughs> is the, the the thing you remembered from this uh, informative article? No, it was it was just little bits like that. Talking about him, there was a thing about uh, someone who worked for that, that fellow who painted the ceiling. Sistine Chapel? Yeah. There okay, was a thing, the, the, a woman who worked for him in his house. And, um... I love how you assimilate information when it's just bordering on the academic or just, or just the interesting and true. It's wonderful. Ivor the Terrible gouged someone's eyes out because built him a house. The f that fella who painted that ceiling <laughs> had a woman work for him. Imagine if you wrote that down in an essay. <laughs> Imagine if you wrote that in a school essay. Well, you probably end up with not, not getting a grade or... Yeah, or, or thinking you turned yeah. up to more than you had. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the go woman on. who lived with... Yeah, the woman who lived in the shoe, go on. Yeah, there was this woman who, uh, who lived with him and, yeah. uh, she used to like, you know, go out and do all this shopping and that. Yeah. Uh, but because she couldn't read or write, 
he used to have to draw everything that he wanted. Why couldn't he just tell her? I don't know. No, but no, 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 wait. That's an excellent point. <laughs> Could she talk? Yeah, but if it's a big list and that, loads of different coloured paints and why and couldn't stuff. she draw- draw on a piece of paper? Why did he have to do it? Because he's a better drawer, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> That's it. That is- we were just looking for the logic of the story. You found it. <laughs> you done it. Play a record. <laughs> this is the best off show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. I'm amazed that these are the highlights and that we've strung it out this long, Rick. But the good thing about this is, we're not here. We recorded this a couple of weeks ago. Just the links, right? This has taken us about ten minutes for the whole show. We get paid the same. Why don't we do this every week? <laughs> That's a great idea. High five. High five. Listen to this clip. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, I think that my new TV is too big, Rick. I said that. I know. I don't know what I was thinking. But I, I, I can't believe it. He talked about this buying it. He's got a bit of cash now, of course. And uh, what is it? Forty-two inches. Mm. 42 inch plasma screen. What did it cost you? Three grand or something? Oh, don't tell. That's, that's, that's Wow, it's three ridiculous. Three, three and a half grand. Big spender. Uh, of course it's too big. Well, I can't get far enough back in my room. In my living room for it. You know, you know, it, for, you're meant to be, I think, four times the screen size away from it. Really? To get out of the air. So that's four times 42 inches you're meant to be sitting away from it, which is impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll have to just get friendly with the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you do a hat? Yeah. <laughs> if, if that's the case, though, aren't you better off just getting a portable? What? I don't understand that rule. Well, what, to get... what are you saying? Well, you're meant to be four times the screen size away from the TV. Well, that's then what's the, the point of having a big telly if you've got to keep moving further back? Get a portable <laughs> and sit <laughs> and right sit next to it. <laughs> do see your point. Why do people go to the cinema, then? Did you see films that are out yet? <laughs> Fair enough, he's got you there. Tom. I tell you this though, <laughs> I had it delivered and um, I, are you supposed to tip delivery men? Of course you I are. I don't know. You well, well, if I've I, never had anything delivered before. I've never well, spent no, that not, much if money. It, not if it's a courier with an envelope, but if it's a bloke who's struggled up the stairs, I two, the door two fat blokes with a fridge, then give him a fiver for a drink. But but the problem was, I didn't realise, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I've got to tip him. And the guy was leaving, and my mobile phone went off in my pocket. Yeah. And I reached in to get it. He put his hand out, thinking it was a tip. I went, oh, it's just my phone. Oh. And I felt terrible after he left. I didn't know. I, what was I going to do? Run down the street and now for him a fiver? No. No, of course not. No. I'm not made no. money. I just spent it all on TV. <laughs> yeah, I've got no money, mate. Yeah. I just spent it all on yeah. this. I had to clean out my jar, exactly. everything, the drawers. Uh, yeah, I'd take some, um, you know, bottles back. What, what, but you, what I, the problem was it took me forever to wire it in. I thought I'm not going to pay for someone to wire it up, you know. So I took me about three hours to wire it in and it was huge and I got it switched on and the first program that was on when I got it wired in was Bargain Hunt. I'll tell you this, David Dickinson's tan almost took me eyeballs out. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was, oh, it was like, it was like x-rays. <laughs> so the close. I know, um, a huge plasma screen with this orange thing yeah. coming out and, and he keeps, and he keeps turning to the camera, <laughs> course, doesn't he? Just grim. to get you. Yeah, he turns away, you get a bit close, and they go, what's he doing? He just turns <laughs> exactly, around, yeah. takes the cornea off. What do you think, <laughs> Bargain Hunter? Bargain Hunter, Bargain Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's why I'd buy a plasma screen, to watch, um, to watch Bargain, Bargain Hunt. Hunt. I mean, it's ludicrous, because this is the problem, is because you, yeah, what do you I want? I mean, from? have you watched anything that's been worth having. The only thing I've watched really worth watching. 24. Well, on, yeah, on 24 works great. But oh. also films, obviously, that's the main reason mm. I bought it, because films just look amazing on the Yeah, DVD on, on yeah. the plasma yeah, screen. So if you're into films and that, yeah. it's just that I only, you know, I've just got the, got the five channels and flicking about. And I'm, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why more people listen to radio and stuff. Yeah. Cause well, not this one, but go on. Well, <laughs> uh, when was it? When was, uh, the last time I sort of sat down and had time, because I'm always busy doing stuff on that. Sure. Um, Moaning takes up about three hours a day. Mm. When did, when did Wimbledon, uh, finish? A couple of weeks ago. Right. Found myself sat there, right, I'm not having a go, I know we stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week and all that, right, so Christ. I'm not, I'm not gonna be having a go. Christ, I'm, I'm sat there. I'm scared. No, I'm not having a go, you've always got to remember that. Go I'm on, just, just, just get on with it, get on, on with it, I'll apologise after. I'm just saying, watching Wimbledon, it wasn't, uh, you know, one of the major games, it was, uh, right. little fellas in a, in a wheelchair, having a, having a game. Little fellas in a wheelchair. Right. But, for me, I mean, you know, great, they're doing a sport and everything. Don't put it on the telly. <laughs> what was up with it? It wasn't, there wasn't, like, a rally going on. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Do you know oh, normally, Christ. like, with the, with the, with the, well, not two Edmund, but, with some of the other. <laughs> 
<laughs> with, with some of the other players and that, they're playing for ages, aren't they? And it's like, yeah. oh, who's gonna win this and that? Yeah. None of that. It was just like, hit it, net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ! Oh, God! I don't know what to do! What, 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 what? And people, people were like sat there watching it as well. When they've got other games going on in there, that's what I couldn't understand. If you've paid your money oh, to get God. in, yeah. I mean, like I say, good on them if they. Do you know what I mean? But it would have been. I and they know, all I, start first in the marathon. I just thought it would have, you know, given the game a swing ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, 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 I understand. Oh, God! Yeah. There's never anything XFM on. XFM in the community. <laughs> Let's play a tune with Ricky Gervais, <laughs> Ricky Dodd Don't put my name to like this it. last link. <laughs> Don't put my name to this last link. Ricky Dodd Gervais, XFM.co.uk. Oh. Magic, Virgin, if you're listening, we are available probably sooner than we thought. <laughs> That's Radiohead and there, there. Uh, we're not here, here. All right, <laughs> pre-recorded. Coming up is uh, one of Carl's little film things where he puts himself into a film. It's his favourite film. It's Kez. Enjoy it. I love the fact that in um, pole position, in, in positions one and two of his favourite films of all time, it's The Elephant Man and Kez. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Go on. All right. I'm leaving the mics open a bit when this is going out. Yeah, or? yeah let's have a listen. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Don't talk then, right? Just put that hot dog down, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bit in Kez where mm. it's the teacher and, and, and he gets up and he has to Glover. talk. Glover? What's his name? Is it Brian Glover? No, no. No. No, it's What's the other the, teacher. The other one. Anyway. Right. Go on. All right. So, here we go. Things that have actually happened. I've got another one. What about you, Casper? Casper! All right. All right? All right. You haven't been listening to a word I've said, have you? Yeah, I heard, uh, I heard some of it. Yeah, you've- Some of it? Just- Stand up! Oh. Always somebody, isn't they? Eh? <coughs> right, now you're gonna tell us a story about yourself. What sort of story? I want you to think of an incident that happened to you sometime in the past, that is true, and that you think will interest the rest of the class. Alright? Alright. Uh... Uh, what about, uh, I work, I work on a, um, on a radio show at the weekend. Well, are you gonna tell us about it? I just, um, just do, it's two hours, and it's, it's with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, and, uh, just sort of play music and, you know, tell stories and stuff. What kind of stories? Well, whatever. Like, last week it was science. We are talking about, uh, this lad who was growing... Uh, a, a knob on his arm, so <laughs> it's weird. It's tricky, sir, because like with Ricky, he he gets bored quick and he won't listen to the stories, and he'll start squeezing the head. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm not interested in what he does. Well, that isn't that isn't normal, is it, sir? That I mean, it sure is a bit gay. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Just messes about, though. Do you know what I mean? I try and like come up with good stuff. Like monkey news and like quizzes and stuff, but then he'll just, you know, Ricky will just mess about. I mean, on on Saturday he did it again. He he, he squoze me head. How did you spell that? Squoes. S Q. Oh, I'm sure I'm not sure. The new word to me. Uh, squoes is S Q U O Z E. Uh, I can't tell us what it is. It's when um, it's when he he gets me head. And he puts one hand on the back of it, right? Yeah. And he puts the other hand on the front of it, and he just sort of swivels it. Right down the back. Oh, swivels not. A, it's spelled S W I D R. How many times a day? How many times a day does as he swivels it? It depends what time he, you know, what time he gets in. If he gets in about half past twelve, he could get a good three in. But but I think you know I don't don't really want to talk about. Well done, Billy. Bring out the report. That is, that, the effort. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that's, uh, that's the best thing you've ever done, Carl. Cent in the club on XFM 104.9. We're playing our favourite singles of the year. Yeah. And, uh, we're looking back over some of our our favourite clips of the year. 
Okay. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Not done a lot. Maybe you should earn your money as you get to Mondays off for this two hours of nonsense. What you on about? Done loads of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. Same old, same old. Yeah. Let's have something new. Something Come fresh. On. Well, I've been looking around, right, on the on the internet for stuff. Yeah. On the internet. Yeah. Your Bible, mm -hmm. where you get all your information about the world and the universe <laughs> and morality from. And you know, like. How I always say to you, I don't really read that much of it, I just read- read the headline. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Anna Nova, I sort of nicked that idea. To grab you. <laughs> <laughs> like, to, to, nicked what idea? Well, to sort of get to the meat. Straight away at the top. Do you know what I mean? The, the headline to the story and everything. What? Right, these are stories- but the headlines already existed, that was why you thought nah, that was a good not idea. like this though. Alright. <laughs> headline. Well, these are all headlines, right? Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh God! You know what Vibrating need? shoes could stop elderly falling. Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> you don't need to read on. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? could because you read that anyway? I can't be bothered. <laughs> Read on me. anyway. Well, Read. you have a look at that in a bit, right? Oh, so, oh, okay. so what this there, is frustrating right. radio if you're sitting at home. No, well, you, it's not on. They've turned it off. If you ought to know more, you know where to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what they should do in the news. <laughs> Get the news done in, Bong. in a minute. There's a good story about Iraq. Right. Bong. Right. Right. Look it up. Look it up on the internet. Right. Alan over. Give us another bong. Bong. Family sick of living on Butthole Road. <laughs> Uh, ah, oh, brilliant. Bong. Man wears same shoes for sixty years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bong. This isn't that good. Uh, some fella pulls a train with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in lighter news. I remember that. Jeff McDonald, this one isn't very good. And, oh. uh, the last one, man fails to break clothes pegs on face record. <laughs> She's always good. Well, yeah. that's, that's the one I did read on about. <laughs> so I, I love that. that, all those, that's the one he read on about. Go on then. Just, um... Why is that news? He fails to make a record. Mm. So did I today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I failed the long jump record today. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even take part. No! I was rubbish. But what are the rules on, on world records and that? I don't, I don't know if there are rules. There are certain things you can't... I mean, it's, it's the Guinness Book of Records, isn't it, really, that's the arbiter, isn't it? Yeah, but is there anything, if you said you wanted to do it, would they say, well, you can't do that? Yeah, they've, they've stopped some gluttony records, obviously things that are in danger, it's anything that's illegal, yeah, anything that's immoral. Yeah, like that, that American serial killer that just got discovered, yeah. he having killed 47 women, I don't think he can make that into the Guinness Book of Records. No, because people would be trying to beat it, won't they? <laughs> but there was some, some other story about a fella eating watches and that, that can't be good for you. So why don't they say, look, don't do that, do something else. He wanted to stay regular. <laughs> you know what, what do you mean? mean? I just, I just wondered what if What do you mean he was eating watches? He just said he was eating watches. He, he got, he got about three in about a minute. How did he, how did he time it? <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? And then, the other thing is, the one, the one that I was reading the world record with the fellow who's pulling a train with his mm. teeth. Mm. Does, does that make any difference? That he's done it with his teeth. What do you mean? Well, what difference does it make? Well, isn't it, it's quite hard to pull a train with your teeth, I imagine. Well, it's pretty hard to pull a train. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is it, is it because he couldn't beat the fella who's pulling it with his hands? Well, that's just, this is my point. There's, uh, I think there was uh, one bloke with a record for the backwards, running backwards hundred metres, was sort of like eleven and a half seconds. And I was thinking, turn around, you'd probably, you'd probably have a really good go <laughs> at that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like doing a marathon with a milk bottle on your head. <laughs> Take the milk bottle off and see how fast you can go, you <laughs> twat. But you can just tweak it, like the fella who has done the pegs on the face, right? Yeah. Um, his name's Gary Stretch Turner. Right. Right. So, he's sort of cheating already if he's, if he's got a stretchy head. Right? <laughs> but, but you are, right, <laughs> you are one of the most stupid humans I have ever met. Well, get me in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Well, listen. <laughs> so, Gary, Gary Stretch Turner, right? His record <laughs> is 153 pegs. Yeah. He did it again, and he only got 150 on. <laughs> so, he hasn't broke his own record. Right. But what I'm saying is, if he tweaked it a bit more, would that make a new record? What? Well, if, if he said, I've got 150 pegs on, 
but at the same time as eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. He'd be the, or, or is the it world or record breaker for pegs and eating burgers at the same time. Yeah, just change it a bit. If you know <laughs> you're not gonna make it, just do something else. I'm assuming the rules are set at the beginning, Carl. That's yeah. it. That's where they say, right, you're just gonna do the pegs thing. You're not gonna introduce burgers halfway through, are you? Definitely not. <laughs> and okay. then they have a go. I was on one leg, not interested. How many pegs? 150. Can I just ask very briefly, I was quite interested by the family had to move because <laughs> they lived on Butthole Road. Yeah, I quite like that no, one. I, I don't know if I've told you before, Rick, where I used to live. I'm not gonna tell you the name of the street that I used to live on because- not on air, because my parents still live there and I don't want right. to, you know. But I'm gonna write it for you now. This is the name, the genuine name of the street I used to live on. I mean, just imagine when you're at school. Yeah. And oh. like in class, for instance in French, you've got to say- they got- you've got to answer where you live. Yeah. J'habite, wherever. Yeah. That's the name, this is actually the name of the street we lived on. No, no, I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> that is- <laughs> I absolutely right. I could phone my father now and he could confirm that for well, you. No, I swear because he doesn't want to- To God. And I'll tell you that- what, But listen, do you know what worries me? It's the apostrophe S. I know. Because that's blatant. Yes. Amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. But imagine how embarrassing So if I look that up in the Bristol- You will find that in the Bristol A to Z. I swear to God. That is really- Why have you never told me that before? I can't believe I haven't. That's I'm incredible. still embarrassed now. Do you know if- whenever I have to phone up, if I have to give that address, I always spell it instantly. Really? Like somehow that'll hide it, that'll disguise the name. But I can't get over that. Anyway, if you perhaps live in Tits Avenue, yeah. <laughs> you know, or um, Franklin Drive. Franklin <laughs> Drive, just get in touch. Let us know, we're not really interested. <laughs> this is the Best Of Show on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the Best Of. I know what you're thinking. If this is the best, my Christ, what was the rest like? Well, we'll be back in a week's time so you can, uh, judge it for yourself live. But anyway, in the meantime, this is one of the best clips I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing just thinking about what it might be. <laughs> he said this, you know, oh God, it's like a child or a cat when it's confused. He went, Steve reckons in ancient Greece, right, it was better to shag a bloke than a woman. And I went, well, yeah, I mean, that's th about the, the male being, uh, um, sort of a, a, a first class citizen, yeah. much better, wasn't it, an aspiration yeah, the, the to sleep with a beautiful Carl, man yeah. than a beautiful woman. Women were lower class citizens, yeah. so therefore men were seen as, uh, uh, as higher class. So to have sexual relations with a man was, there was no shame in that. No. In fact, it was looked upon and as And I said, well, it's, you know, ancient Rome, I said, um, you know, Nero, he used to, he'd sit in his big jacuzzi <laughs> and he used to get, you know, pretty boy men. To just go into the water and just nibble at his testicles while he was having a wash. He didn't do that. He, he did. Uh, yeah. And he's not a gay fella. No, well no, I mean, you know, I don't know about Nero, but I mean it wasn't, it wasn't a case of a big delineation between what was heterosexual and what was gay. It was just, you know, whatever you... So what, what did this fella do then? This one who's having his... Well he was, he was pretty much top, top boy, Nero, for yeah. a while. He was in charge. And uh... You know, and they, you did what you did what you're told. If uh, Caesar or, but why know. were people going round there? Why didn't they go? Oh. No, they weren't dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> they, it wasn't like the door was open. I was going to see what Nero's doing. You'd have probably been like a delivery boy or a stable boy or something, you know. And you'd have popped round there and you'd have gone there at Nero as uh, as the tablets of stone you wanted. And they go, Pilkington, why are you out here? Pop on. I don't know why he's French. What, what is that? I don't know why he's French. Just pop under the water and nibble at my testicles and you'd have done it. Because he was Nero. I wouldn't. He would have. Well, there's you'd no way I would have done. Yeah, well you would have. What if I had done? I've dropped a pizza off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you put around Nero's face in pizza. <laughs> I've right. pizza. Right, <laughs> I'd, I'd say, I've done my job. Right? Yeah. That's not the sort of tip I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he'd have said, get the little baldy chap to nibble at my testicles and you'd have run the water. No, I wouldn't have done it. Na well, you wouldn't have done it. Well, you wouldn't have done it. Well, well, so. uh, 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 can I just say this, Steve? Not only would you be nibbling at his testicles, you'd have been going mad. You'd have been noshing him just for extra. You'd have had a. You'd have been doing everything he wanted. You'd have been going. He'd have gone. I didn't ask you to do that. You'd have been going mm. mental. You'd have been chewing, slurping, right. smacking, poking. He'd have chopped. You'd have. You'd have gnawed. His right. packet. Oh, you think you're eating Walker's Chris? There'd be bubbles, there'd be blood. Oh, it'd be horrible. <laughs> That was Bowie from Waterloo Sunset. Love that. Love the original. Love Bowie. Bowie was my gig of the year. 
These are my singles of the year. These are our clips of the year. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. We're yeah. just picking some lovely little bits and pieces. Do you remember when we talked about this? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the sort of thing I think we need now, right? We've covered a lot of stuff. What, education? What teaching, yeah. Well, uh, okay, um, what, what do you want to know? Uh, don't know. Have you I got just, something? Can uh, you educate us on anything? I've been reading bits So could we bring back just for one, one, for one night only, educating Ricky? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, do you think it warrants that? I don't, I don't know enough about it. Do you know what I mean? About what? It sounds perfect. Play the jingle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, educating Ricky! He's getting smarter. <laughs> a couple of things happened in the week that I read about. Okay. Keeping up on what's going on in that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one was about, about that Galileo fella. Okay. Uh, was it about 1636? <laughs> 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 Go was on. It? Was it? I think it might have been earlier. Go on. Did some stuff we like and that. Yeah, yeah, he did lots of physical experiments, yeah. Is that it then, Carl, is it? He did, he did some stuff with light and that. What did he do with light? What was that? Well, he did, he, well, he, uh, I think he invented the first... Telescope? Uh, yeah, telescope. So, I, I, I think it's a particular lens out of that, um, and, uh, he did experiments where he dropped two, um, famously, two different, uh, weighted, uh, balls from pizza, Pisa. And, uh, they hit the ground at the same time, showing that the, doesn't matter, the weight doesn't matter, the air resistance does and stuff like that. I think he probably explained it a bit better than that. Yeah, but I'm talking to Carl. <laughs> sure. But did, did they need to know He's stuff- He's just thinking about pizza. <laughs> yeah. Did they need to know stuff like that back then? What do you mean, did they need to know stuff like that? It's just, it's just- They weren't people going around going, I've got to drop these two things off the uh, Leaving Tower of Pizza, I, I just don't know. know which one's gonna land first. Yeah, I need to know. What do you need to Bring know about? Bring me Galileo. Yeah. It's for a bet. <laughs> yeah. No, but if I was knocking about then, I'd be like, stop messing with that. We need a telly. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah. bet he thinks the Flintstones is real. I know. That, that'd be brilliant. That's what I'd do if I was a caveman. I'd make a telly out of rock. <laughs> yeah. And a pelican and, and a cement that I just mixer. Ran along the room with. Ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we need a car. Yeah. Well, we haven't really got the internal combustion engine. Can you stick your feet through the bottom? <laughs> yeah, just get me a car for Christ's sake. <laughs> anyway, so I learned that. And yeah. then, um... What? <laughs> you learned his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other people I'd learned Brilliant. the name of this week. Oh, if a chimp could watch telly. Go on, Carl, go on. And there was also a fella in the week who said, uh, that women shouldn't be wearing trousers. Why? Because they don't look good in them. What do you think? What do you think about that? It's rubbish. Yeah. These are the only things <laughs> that have caught your eye. Over the last couple of weeks. This is the entire news. Galileo did something with light. A French fella said women shouldn't wear trousers. See, that, that to me wouldn't pass as education. <laughs> it's not education. <laughs> I don't know where you could ever use that. I don't know when that would ever be applicable to I life. Ju I just like reading stuff that sort of reminds me of, do you know what I mean? If I read it and it gets me thinking, I think that's, that's a good little piece. But, but I mean, uh, but surely me, um, sure, can't you just sort of like sit near something that vibrates to keep your brain going? Or shake your head every now and again? I mean, what, what does this do? You mean it makes you start using your brain? But what aspect of the, a Frenchman said women shouldn't wear trousers got your mind working? What questions were you because asking? Because I thought that's, that's a bit, that's a bit daft, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Okay, it ends there with me. <laughs> there's nothing else, there's nowhere else for me to go on that. He claims your mind's the still worrying. <laughs> yeah, go on, what do you think? Let's go through this. Oh, I wish we could download his I thoughts. Know, I Just know. watch it. Yeah. Uh, uh, wouldn't it be great, like a DVD? Uh, like a added, imagine that, uh, extra footage on the office DVD. Yeah. Carl's oh, brain. That would be with amazing. A oh, what with a commentary. Is, Go on. Women wearing, wearing trousers and that, right? <laughs> on the estate that I grew up in. Yeah. On, on, right? Uh, there's a woman about four houses down. <laughs> right, right. Rough. Now, she used to wear leggings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, they're a bad idea. <laughs> they are a terrible idea. I agree with you there, Carl. If you're a lady of what the normal were, were they, were they, they pink? Were, no, they were sort of black, but with all bits on them. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? What, yeah. toast and just bits. horse droppings? Yeah, go on, yeah. And she used to, um, she's quite a big woman. Sure. Pauline Quirk, I think, yeah, described well, the, her as. Looked like a light bulb, which is those kind of women that are attracted to leggings. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. They are drawn to them like a moth. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah, yeah. She yeah. used to wear them, and, and, and that's what I remember when I read this piece. And <laughs> uh, she used to work on one of those sex line things. Right, right. She used to do that. But <laughs> what was she an engineer? The, 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 
<laughs> the weird thing, the weird thing with her was, um, she had big eyelids. <laughs> right. Go on. That, that were too big, and this, this is what I was thinking. What, right? what, do you mean she, what do you mean she had big eyelids? How big do eyelids have to be for you to go, they're big eyelids? <laughs> or she's shoplifting with them? Would she come out of Dixon's with, like, radio stored in them? What do you mean yeah, she had no, big was eyelids? A, it was another one of them popular things around our way, do you know, like- What do you mean popular things? <laughs> they didn't go, go, they didn't go, oh, I'll tell you what, oh, all the rage, can I get some big eyelids, please? <laughs> no, 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 it was just like one of them things that people suffered with, just big eyelids, they could hardly open their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? That, that's one of the popular things around where I grew up. People have big eyelids, they could hardly open their eyes. What does that mean? What sort of freak town were you born in? You had webbed feet people with big heads, you got women with big eyelids. What does big eyelids mean? Are you confusing her with the horse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did she have hooves? <laughs> Look, what? Just anyway, so there's this big eyelided woman with the legs. And that's what I'm saying to you though, that's- when I read that story with people with trousers, yeah. I went from that yeah. to a that. woman who used to have big eyelids. Still, I still know the point. <laughs> but then, but then, and also the other bloke who had the eyelid problem was a was a mate of mine. Right. Yeah. His, his dad had it. Um, <laughs> same problem, massive, massive eyelids. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, I'm, I used to say to my mum, oh, I'm going round to, you know, Dave's house. Yeah. And, uh, or say, pick, well, <laughs> that's all right, but make sure his dad doesn't take you out in the car, because he could hardly, <laughs> <laughs> he could hardly see. He had to have his head. <laughs> he gets to tilt his head back to keep his legs open. Make sure! Did he have a couple of matches with him all, at all times? <laughs> oh. What a load of gold he do. Uh, what what about about this began as educating Ricky. I know, so it's what, like he was people thinking, with eyelids. But it's like you're supposed to make that leap as well. Yeah. If I mentioned the, the trousers, Ricky would probably be thinking about people with big eyelids <laughs> and women <laughs> yeah. wearing leggings. Play a record, Carl. <laughs> This is the best off show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merch. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. Like I said to you though, mm? the reason I did this yeah. was to get that kitchen. Right? Now. Brilliant. As we speak now, right? Builder's in the flat. He's been annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> of course he has. Of course he has. What's he been doing? Uh, well, when he, when he turned up on, uh, on Monday, right? Yeah. Wanders in. And the first thing he says to me is, uh, said the pub across the road, is it any good? <laughs> I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You're working on the kitchen. Think of saying that to a builder. Probably making conversation. Probably meant, do they do a, a, a toasted sandwich? Cause I've got a half hour lunch break. Not an hour, like Carl Bilkington. Mm, mm. So, uh, I'll probably then get a nice, you know, cheese and tomato sandwich. So you genuinely what you said to him? Yeah. Chris, yeah, yeah so Su Suzanne had a go at me saying, why have you said that? He hasn't even started on it yet. I cannot believe that. You're unbelievable, Carl. And you say it's us that are rude, crass, I wasn't being rude. I just was, I just was letting him know. Do you know what I mean? I know what He knows what he was there for. He had it down on his little docket. Do the kitchen this week. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. didn't come down and go, what the f- what did I come out for? Was it to go to the pub for a week? Why have I been wearing these overalls? Yeah. Who's the little bald man twat insulting me? <laughs> Let me just check. Let me call the head office. I wasn't having a go though. I mean, they should have finished it yesterday. And yeah. they're there now. Yeah. Right, on their own. And what annoyed me is they turned up late today. I got Carl, I've just realised something. They're probably listening to the radio. This, I assume, tuned to XFM, isn't it, in your kitchen? Yeah, but they don't know it's me, do they? Do you know what I mean? No. They'd go, he's got a whiny mank voice as well. So's the bloke who owns this place. And the bloke who owns this place, when I said, what's that pub like across the road, said, well, you won't be bothering that. He's working on no, this. No, he, he won't be able to put two and two together, will he? You've suddenly, the pen is dropped, doesn't it? You've suddenly realised. Look at his face! Yeah. He's suddenly realised they might know it's him! And they could be listening, and they're gonna clean you out, mate. Oh, if you are the builder working in, uh, where is it? I won't say the address, but it's... Central London, isn't yeah. it? Go yeah. Go mental. Have whatever you want. Opposite Seriously. that, opposite that pub that yeah. you like, that you're... That It'll you're... probably be in there now, so he won't be listening. Oh, insulting. You know, insulting a British insult. workman. He should so have been just in go today. mental. He should have been at, at eight this morning. Just which annoyed me anyway. Mental. Why, I don't, I really don't understand why they've got to start so early, right? Yeah. But he said he'll be there for eight, turn up at half nine, yeah. right? Wanders in. And what annoys me is, he could have left all this downstairs, he had a paper under his arm, yeah. one of those crossword books, yeah. and a pot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not being funny, but most of them take up quite a bit of time. A crossword book, he's not happy with just the one that's in the paper. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> if you're listening, if you are the builder that's listening now, doing Carl's flat, what about pissing in the laundry basket? That was, uh, Jane's Addiction. This is the Best Off Show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Murch. Yes. This was a clip show. We recorded this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I hope you had a, uh, a Merry Christmas. Um, it's not over yet, cos tonight at 9.50 is the second part of the Office Christmas specials. It's brilliant. Watch it. And we'll be back next week live. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Bye. Have a great new year. <laughs> Probably you're thinking, Rick, um, isn't it time that we do the, our usual roundup of what's been happening in the news? Yeah. Which mm. we always do every week. Yeah. Uh, we always do something. Which is, I mean, basically, if you're listening and you're a new listener, say you work at a newspaper, we always try to be informative, just try and put stuff out there that just educates people, informs people. What are you people. thinking? Well, I said monkey news is coming up, but what have yeah. you got? No, I was just looking on the net there and just found a couple of quite important news stories, probably worth mentioning. Um, policeman caught photographing. <laughs> 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 I don't know why it makes me laugh. It's just a phrasing, I suppose. It's just a headline. Policeman caught photographing up woman's skirt. <laughs> no, um, he wasn't up there taking a picture <laughs> of Big Ben. No, he wasn't no. going, can I just sit up here? I'm just gonna take a picture of that, <laughs> that seagull over there. No. He was facing the camera up a woman's skirt. <laughs> he was indeed. Right. Uh, a policeman in Japan is facing disciplinary measures after he was caught photographing up a woman's skirt <laughs> with a hidden camera while on duty. Uh, the 42-year-old sergeant, who's not been named, used a digital camera to secretly snap the shots when the woman was reporting a stolen bicycle. So he was actually... He was actually doing his proper job. He'd obviously thought to himself, I'll bring him a digital camera today. On the off chance a beautiful woman comes in to report a crime or robbery, I'll have it ready, I'll have it positioned, you know, yeah. in such a way. But this is interesting, this is how he got caught, okay? The woman became suspicious after she saw a flash go off. Brilliant. Well, I mean, this Not so secret at all. <laughs> Sorry, did I just see your shoe? Your shoe just seemed to just spring into life there. It was light. There was light. Yeah, I think I've had some, uh, someone set fire to some magnesium that was <laughs> no, on the no, end of it. It no, won't happen again. But it's only you and I in here and your shoe was, yeah. just suddenly lit. Why are you standing like that? Why is your shoe just sort of like between my feet? There's no reason. There's no reason. Just, stand. just, d where, what did the bike look like? Flash? <laughs> <laughs> so, are you taking pictures of my money? No, 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 no. And no, I'm not. And you should be wearing knickers anyway. Well, how do you know that? What? How did you know I'm not? How did I know what? The, I'm not wearing any... I didn't know you. I don't know what you've got up there. Well, I don't know what it looks like, and I never, <laughs> there's no way I could. <laughs> of course, that, that would be- it would be the rough of that conversation in Japanese. I know, yeah. Do yeah. you know, um, you just mentioned there about, sort of, no knickers and that. <laughs> it's sure. gonna be your Auntie Nora. No, 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 no. Right. It's just, you know, like, the- the last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road and I could see, uh, it was the hairy, hairy. There was the hairy Chinese. Well, not the hairy Chinese kid. He was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Running Because that's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids are very yeah. rare, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't <laughs> there? <laughs> in one of those uh, shit little magazines that you buy. Oh, and there was the old woman who didn't move. She was just sat there reading the book all who the time. Who we think possibly died and no right. one came round yeah, for weeks, yeah. I mean. But, and now I've moved, right? Mm. And it was quiet for a bit. I always look at what view I'm getting, sure. right? Uh, looked across and it was just sort of empty sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that, right? Anyway, people are in there now, <laughs> right? Um, and they've put all the furniture in, but I haven't put any curtains up. Oh. Right. So anyway, I'm, I'm sort of washing up, just having a, having a look out the window. Yeah. Right. Uh, girl sort of, uh, wandering about, you know, knickers on, right? With no knickers on? You mean no naked? knickers? Well, she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But, uh, She's no probably knickers. looking for a knicker. So, I thought, oh. And I don't know how long I was looking. No. <laughs> right? But anyway, she looks across. Oh, God. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh, God. I felt really bad. Yeah. I said to Suzanne. Sorry, is this some sort of peeping Tom confession? No idea. Well, it's, it's not, that's the thing, though. Peepington. I, if, if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, because she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no. But and your hands it, moving as you were washing up. <laughs> <laughs> and some white looking substance <laughs> rotting up. Simply stubborn stain on this yeah. glass. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if she looked across. <laughs> I'm assuming the sink is lower. <laughs> but, burn the window. But, but did, didn't she just like, just cover up or something? Or she looked back and go, oh, you're looking at, you're looking at my bunny. Well, <laughs> the thing I did. What? I thought, oh, just sort of dropped me boxer short. Cause I thought, what? Well, Suzanne said, what are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, just, just, just so they can see me, cheeks of me. What are you talking about? No, they s because I thought, 
If she thinks I am walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl! This sounds like, this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. Um, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, the only thing you could do was immediately uh, drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your boxer shorts. <laughs> I wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So this is she wouldn't genius. Have seen, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So you then made them. <laughs> <laughs> you actually in front of them. <laughs> oh, this is amazing! So you climbed in front of the window <laughs> to show off. No, it wasn't your naked lower half. Suzanne said, "What are you doing?" And <laughs> I said, then she did. <laughs> What are you looking at? So I sent you in here to clean what up. What are you doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down and standing out the window. <laughs> Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. What do you think <laughs> I'm doing, Suzanne? I'm exposing mm. myself while looking at some free <laughs> money. Leave it, leave it, leave What's up with you, Suzanne? Anyway. Oh, wait a minute, can I just say? <laughs> A final question. <laughs> what did the woman yeah. across the way? What yeah. happened? What well, was her reaction? I didn't look again. I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well. We're both happy. Let's let's leave it. Brilliant. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers on your ankles? Yeah. I just was walking about, and Susan said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window yeah. because then it's Excellent. obvious." Then, yeah. her, then, then he sees that she calls her husband to look at Carl walking around naked. And he goes, "Oh, she's got a quick, Suzanne, get him out. <laughs> yeah. There's only one with him. To get some more friends. <laughs> They've got one more." So the picture does.